The latest Starfield news shows a lot of promise for the story as well as the game size, but is this a risk that Bethesda is taking with Starfield gameplay and how they're going to execute on it? I'm going to give you all the information right here at the beginning. What was said, we have an interview with the composer about the game size as well as the very different approach to story for Starfield. I'm going to put that at the beginning so you don't have to go searching for it and that way if you want to watch the rest of the live stream you can. These videos are a little bit longer because I do stream live every day. So hit subscribe and the bell button so you don't miss those streams. This is a Reforge update. Starfield is taking a pretty big risk with its story and game being as big as it is and will it pay off? Let me give you the details from an interview with a composer. We're going to be addressing both what are they doing with the story that sounds so different and how exactly you know big is this game in comparison to their other titles. As always, hit subscribe and the bell button if you like these quick uploads and check out Reforge Gaming where I stream live. So the composer Inan Zur was sharing story details in an interview with segucart.com retelling some of this and giving us the goods on exactly what they're doing with the game with respect to size and story. First, he said that Starfield, according to him, is a deep and philosophical game that will consume a lot of your existence. While he doesn't think it will make you a changed person, he believes that playing through its story will give you a deeper perspective to your whole being. As I read these details, and I sort of looked at some of the footage of designing the starship internally and externally and adding to it, it's starting to feel a little bit more like Star Trek than a more traditional RPG. According to Zur, ideas like having the courage to ask questions and to try and find those answers are at the core of Starfield. It's more than just another shooter or another RPG game he claims. So I think this is a pretty big risk going philosophical, going to more of a let's ask tough questions because of the nature of the gaming world. This might backfire on them or receive criticism. Zur states that the Starfield story takes a very courageous step into the realm of the philosophical. I think this could be lost on gamers. I think they could be accused of being woke. Anytime game companies try to say or do anything meaningful, they can kind of get wrapped on the, you know, the beater. I do think some companies are trying to use their Twitter and their platform to really push certain things that don't have anything to do with gaming. But when it gets baked into a game, sometimes if it's subtle and good, I think people could celebrate it and like it. But I also think people could accuse it of being either woke or it could just be completely lost on them. They just won't get it. More story centric than original impressions have indicated is kind of the conclusion I came to this is more story centric according to the article he finds that starfield is all about its story and your ability to write your own story within the framework of its narrative it's also about the ability to ask questions seek relevant answers and perhaps be able to reach them i felt like from the initial impressions of the game it was going to be a little bit more about exploration rpg shooting kind of like fallout in space this sounds like it's quite a bit different than that the story will be more centric to your experience as he says you can write your own story within the framework of the narrative that they have come up with now what about game size this is getting a little confusing because we don't necessarily know if he's referring to map size how many places you can go but just for perspective he says that starfield is at least twice the size of the biggest game bethesda game studios has ever made claims the game's composer now i think he's probably referring to fallout 76 if you look at it fallout 4 was bigger than skyrim skyrim was always hailed as probably one of the biggest games at its time then fallout 4 was bigger than it and then fallout 76 was four times bigger than fallout 4 these are these are massive games and if he's thinking listen it's going to be at least twice the size of fallout 76 that's pretty big that also could be not that impressive given that there's supposed to be a thousand planets just how far can you travel on these planets if the total you know adding up the sum of its parts is only equaling to be about twice the size of fallout 76 maybe he has another game in mind philosophical could be lost on players or criticized game size could feel stretched out and make the game feel thin bland and dull or it could be a game that seemingly has endless possibilities for you to experience explore and build let me know what you think in the comments below check out reforge gaming where i stream live and as always hit subscribe and the bell button and i'll see you in the next video And I'll see the rest of you right now. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. 
lot of things to discuss here. There's sort of two ways to look at this. Number one, the the philosophical approach to the story, as well as the game being more story-centric than we thought. And then there's the game size. What game is he referring to? If you're watching the VOD or you're here live, always remember there are various ways to support the stream. We're really trying to push membership. Let us know in the comments or in the chat things that you'd like to see, maybe as membership perks, because we would like to see some of those folks that are not getting those gifted members to jump in on their own. Let us know what perks would win you over. We do an extra show every day for members. It's a talk show at the end of the day. Uh, And then we do the Friday night streams with my wife. Do you want to see more gameplay? Do you want to see special segments that are just for members that get uploaded? Let us know what would maybe convince you to jump in. Don't forget you can order coffee or also use my code over at 80s Tees if you ever like the shirt that I'm wearing. So, good morning guys. Go through the daily ritual. Smash the like button. Get on live chat so that way you can see what everybody's saying. And a big thank you to our first super chat tip of the day from James Carr. A $10 tip. Very generous, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, We do think that we have fixed gifted members. So those of you that have enjoyed gifting them and you want to bless folks, uh, we think we have come up with a solution that allows them to go out much faster. Uh, folks are wanting to see my wife and I play a pretty funny game on Friday night. Uh, I believe it's called Genital Jousting. I said in the Discord, listen, if you guys hit 1,500 members again, I'll do it. I'll give you another incentive because we will be in September uh, when that hits. So before Friday, if you guys manage to get us to 1,500 members, up from where we're like about 1,200 right now. All right, uh, I want to see you here on time, you slacker. Yeah, unfortunately, our second show of the day today is about God of War Ragnarok. I had to type up that entire show this morning because they uh, dropped a bunch of info in an untimely fashion. So good to see you in the chat feed. Good to see everybody else here this morning. I want to know first and foremost, I think sort of the first thing I want to hear you guys on is, do you think their attempt to make the game more story-centric and to be more philosophical Is that something that could potentially either backfire on them? Could it be lost on players? I didn't really get the impression this was going to be a story-centric game when I've watched the first couple of Starfield trailers. I thought, this looks like Fallout in space. I think it looks good. I was one of the people sort of defending certain aspects of the game when people were coming over every little, you know, nook and cranny. But I definitely didn't get the impression that it was going to be a super story-centric game. It seemed like I was going to be able to kind of do what I wanted And then periodically, if I wanted to run quests or talk to people in the main city, I could. According to the composer, it is all about the story. The story is the centerpiece of Starfield. These, I wouldn't even call these Starfield story details, but knowing that that's their approach, I started to get the vibe of like, I've been watching Star Trek with my wife. We've been re-watching The Next Generation. And it sounded to me like he was describing a very Star Trek-like experience, like, boldly going out and asking these questions and you know being posed with philosophical conundrums about what we should or shouldn't do as we sort of explore the galaxy story could always backfire says omega gameplay combat is more important you didn't think an rpg was going to be a a story game i'll be honest with you when i played through fallout 4 homie i didn't feel like the story was super centric I felt like you could just kind of play Fallout 4 and be heavy questing and heavy building and heavy, you know, crafting and not really pay any attention to the story. Like, there was definitely a story in Fallout 4, but I didn't feel like it was this super central thing. It also certainly wasn't like a philosophical story. You were trying to figure out what happened, and that was basically it. I won't support a game with any philosophical or political ideologies. How do you play video games then? Like, what game do you play that's void of that? Uh, That has a story in it, that has drama, that has tension, that has a good guy and a bad guy. Just having a video game with a good guy and a bad guy has philosophical ideologies in it. What do you mean? Heck yes from me, says Derek. All my favorite games have really huge stuff to think about beneath the bare gameplay and the basic story. Horizon, Tilu, Limbo, Inside, Kena... Fallout, Metroid, most Zelda games. You're saying you only play Pac-Man? Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I, I, like, I don't think every game needs to, like, let you know who they voted for, but I definitely think most games have some level of philosophical or even sometimes even political things in them. You don't think every single Call of Duty has political ideologies baked into them? 
like Western mindsets about solutions to problems. He, like, come on, that's that's baked into every even the most mindless game. It's baked in. Their games have always had that. It's part of their DNA. The stories exist in the main and the side quest. Bethesda games have always had some political nuances and ideologies. Any science fiction worth their weight examines the human condition. Yeah, I I really feel that this sounds like Star Trek. This is the most like Star Trek I think the game has felt since the beginning. Because when I watched the one trailer, I was like, oh man, they're, they're basically like decking out their ship. Sorry, I promise I don't mean philosophical. I'll watch what I type. I meant woke type ideologies. There it is. There it is. See, that's what I said in my open, Donovan. I, you know, feel free to flesh out your position, but I said that. I said, if they try to do this, if they try to put like philosophical conundrums and thought experiments and asking big questions, they're going to get accused of being woke. I said that to Creature last night. If Star Trek released today, people would call it woke. Oh, 100%. 100%. I've been watching it and their their con- their their conundrums, their 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 problems and the tension arises from what do we do? Do we have the right to do this? Should we interfere? How does this person claim this is right while this person claims another? They encounter entire people groups that have different customs and they're like, I don't know if we're right and they're wrong. What if we're wrong and they're right? All of the time that's President Star Trek. People call every game woke anymore. King of the Hill is woke in today's political stage. It's wild. Oh, the show King of the Hill? Is that still going on? Are you saying like if you go back and rewatch it, Butters? Skyrim had political stuff and it didn't bother me one bit, says Darkstar. What constitutes something as being woke? If you don't like it, you just call it that. That's kind of what it's dumbed down to. It, there was a time period where I think it was an effective word because you could say like somebody's trying to be so woke, so like on the front edge of being progressive that they've like lost their way. We call it going full. Never go full. And that's going full. When you go so full about like you want to be progressive and on the forefront of change that you basically sacrifice good thought and analysis and you're just grabbing on to whatever makes you sort of like feel like you're the most relevant or you're on the front edge of progressive. Well, it slowly turned into well, anything I don't like. If it's the other side of the aisle, if they're having an influence in story or in a movie or a show, well, we're going to call it woke, Right. So I feel like there was a time where it was an easy way to describe, like, man, that person's going full. Like, it's great to think progressively about things, but my gosh, you've gone fully down the road. When I look at the Starfield news, and the minute they said, the minute this guy said, yeah, the story's going to be more philosophical, it's going to make you ask hard questions, and you're going to have to seek out those answers, I'm like... That could go sideways on them. People could really feel like, nah, I don't like this, man. I this is this is getting philosophical, political, whatever. Strange New Worlds is woke. That's why I stopped watching it. I'll do the game for a game, Lona. We just all want a good game. I guarantee you that Strange New Worlds is exactly like Star Trek: The Next Generation, which means it's not woke. It's in line with the how the show has always been. Like, seriously, rewatch Star Trek The Next Generation. You know what I'm saying? Folks, anti this, anti this, anti this, not everything you don't like. I mean, Teo Tapier, I sit here every day and cover video gaming, video game news, and I'm here to tell you that people use that word. It's like the guy in The Princess Bride. Inconceivable! And the guy's like, you keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Like, people use it for everything now. It's lost its meaning. You know what I'm saying? It's like, well, Star Trek The Next Generation and then, you know, uh, Strange New Worlds is asking big fundamental questions about life and different people groups. Yeah, that's woke. And it's like, what? Like, I'm currently watching Next Gen. Strange New Worlds is more blatant. I'll have to... I haven't watched it yet. My wife and I are working our way through Next Generation. I happen to think some things get preachy. Like, I thought the pilot for She-Hulk got preachy, but I wouldn't say it was woke. I'd be like, that was just kind of preachy. What the frick was that? Like, 
we all know that like people are having struggles with certain things that doesn't mean you have to preach at the audience do you know what i'm saying no man strange new worlds is mad woke it's all about identity just because some misuse it doesn't mean it's always wrong strange new worlds is like an episode of riverdale i'm not familiar with riverdale next generation love the series the reason you might be tuning in you're like why are we talking about star trek I feel like the more I look at Starfield, the more it's going to have in common with Star Trek. So in the Starfield, like, gameplay loop, you're going to be establishing your ship, getting people to work on your ship, like the insides of the ship being designed and decorated, and you're going to be going out to all these different places. And according to the game's composer, the Starfield story will be centric and will have you asking these questions, have you being more philosophical. And I said, well, that could go sideways on them. Like, people in here are already saying, like, oh yeah, Strange New Worlds is woke. And if that show is being labeled that, wouldn't surprise me at all if Starfield ends up getting accused of the same thing. No Man Starfield, did you read that on Reddit this morning? Like, is that the best you can come up with? We've already analyzed the pieces and the parts of this game, the structure of the RPG and the flow of the game's, like content loop it, it's it's got almost nothing in common with no man's sky just wait eventually you'll learn it doesn't have things that no man's sky has and then that'll make you mad so you'll run the negative narrative that it's too much like no man's sky and then when you find out it doesn't have things like no man's sky does because it's not a space exploration sim game it's a space rpg you'll start accusing it of not having things that should be in there like whichever you know equips you to run the you know the thoughtless negative narrative it's either too much like no man's sky or not enough just wait the, you know the deep the deeper you dive on the game the more you'll realize you have to modify your you know prior made negative narrative that's my point it would be better if it had no man's sky elements there it is there it is call it no man's starfield say it's a poor man's no man's sky and look at that guys within 30 seconds No, 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 that's my point. It would be better if it had No Man's Sky elements. Yes, because that's what No Man's Starfield represents. Sure. Did I roll my eyes hard enough? People uh, don't call everything woke. They call things woke that fit into a certain category or adjacent to that category that may not be woke, but it's adjacent, so they assume it's woke. Okay, you said they don't call everything woke, but they call anything adjacent to the category that, even so, because they, they assume it's woke. You just literally described people calling everything woke. Now, when I say they call everything woke, it's hyperbolic to convey a point. I'm conveying the point that you just conveyed. I don't mean they literally call everything woke. This is woke. My charger's woke. These headphones are woke. My coffee mug is woke. I'm not saying that they quite literally call everything in their periphery or even in front of them woke. I'm saying they're using it so much that it's losing its meaning. Like, they're, they're losing its meaning. It's too, it's, everything is. My baby's woke. Freaking baby. <laughs> yeah. Only if that baby would stay asleep. Example, characters being inserted into a story for identity politics versus a character just happening to be that type of character but not being inserted for identity politics. I don't think people understand what Star Trek The Next Generation was doing if you don't think they were inserting people and characters and races into the show to be analogous to real life and real things that we face. If you watch Star Trek The Next Generation and you don't pick on the one-to-one analogies that they put into their stories, then you're just too dumb to do narrative analysis. Like, seriously. Don't join a book club because they'll, they'll tell you to leave after you try to analyze the first chapter of The Grapes of Wrath. Like, you ain't gonna make it. If you watch Star Trek The Next Generation and you don't see the one-to-one analogous, analogous things that they do then you you don't have the brain capacity to break down narrative, which means when you tell me something's woke, I'm probably not going to trust your analysis and breakdown. First interracial kiss in the 70s, and you think they didn't insert that for identity politics. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Star Trek did that. Yeah, in the 70s. (laughs) Example... I don't care if there's this is one of the main characters in Strange New Worlds. It's what they preach. You know what I mean by woke chat? It's their ideologies. 
Yeah, but I don't understand. So, like, if if they put that in Starfield, you're woke. Okay. It, like I said, it doesn't even have meaning anymore. If you know how not woke I was, if you knew how anti, like, hyper progressive I am, you you would you would find it funny that you're calling me that. Unless you're calling me that to be a joke, right? If Starfield, if the Starfield story has the presence of those types of situations, right? Different people, different types of people, you know, different things than you, then then that is got that potentiality then of being like woke, I guess, in your mind. This is what typically seems to happen, okay? Somebody said if it's anti white men it's woke and you know what that's been twisted into if that's not the main driver of the narrative if that's not the main presence then it's woke playing as a female is a problem having having you know females of different you know orientations is a problem you know it's like well that's not me so that's woke like it's one thing for you to be against there's like a whole movement that's like anti-men if you're paying attention right and I am against that movement okay anybody with a brain sees that it's counterproductive and it's an overreaction right it's a complete overreaction the idea that there's this you know enormous systemic patriarchy in the west has just been dismantled 10 times over by psychoanalysis sociological analysis you know economic realities like there's so many pieces and parts to it it's just a freaking boogeyman, you know, to find an easy scapegoat, okay? I'm against that, but I'm not against stories having, like, other people in them. And I think that's where it gets conflated, is you're like, wait a minute, this smells like that, therefore it's that. You're explaining what I'm talking about when you said having females is a problem or having females of different types of orientations or whatever. That can be okay, but sometimes... They are just... Oh, you ran out of characters. I don't know if you played Outer Worlds, but it was a game pretty anti-company. That's woke since they're exploiting people in the game and everything. Essentially, this, and people called the game woke. People called Outer Worlds woke? It's just being inserted for identity reasons. Uh, Those are what I mean by those things being close and the category being the same thing, but happening for different reasons. But how do you know when something's being inserted? Right? How do we know in Starfield that they're going to do that? I'm not like I'm not saying that you said they are. Let's say in Starfield they do that. They put different people in the game of different orientations and they they present you with conundrums and questions. How do you know it's been done for quote unquote identity reasons? Like where do you extrapolate that from? Where are you extrapolating intention from the presence of the person? That's my question. Like, let's have an actual dialogue here. Okay, they threw a bunch of that in the show. Let's say they throw a bunch of that into Starfield. Starfield's the composer says it's going to be very philosophical. It's, it's, it's going to present you with questions. And the first thing I thought of was, that sounds like Star Trek to me. Star Trek is constantly presenting the main characters with these philosophical conundrums. Do we get involved? Are their customs right and fair and just? Is our conception of right and fair and just something that's been presumed from our own history as the human race? Like, it's a show that's constantly presenting you with philosophical decisions to make. And and my question would be, what's 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 wrong with that? Why are you assuming there's intention there? Philosophical doesn't necessarily mean woke. Look how quickly we got there. I mentioned Star Trek. I mentioned being presented with philosophical questions and look where we ended up. We've been live for 24 minutes. Just how long do you think it's going to take people to be like, Starfield's woke because they had a character in there and they made me choose between A and B. Right? Bro sound like, my brother Derek said here, Bro sound like I'm cool with women being in the room. I just think that they should be quiet. (laughs) Sometimes it does sound that way. People just assume it's the same woke inserts. 
based on what I've seen, I don't think that people are really good at distinguishing the difference just because so many things have come out that have been woke and then when they do normal things. But Lono, every TV now has trans, this, that, person of color, just because, even if it doesn't make any sense. I mean, I don't want to get into a big discussion about diversity dust and superficial changes to stories and characters, but if a TV show happens to have people in it like that, like, I think a great example of a show that did that would have been uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Modern Family. They just told a great story, and characters in the show happened to be representative of different people. You had a gay captain, you had uh, a bisexual detective, you had all these different things, right? Like, I think those shows did a great job. Modern Family did a great job of just being like, yeah, these are people that exist. These are just people that exist, yeah. They're they're out there, you know? They're not lurking around the corner waiting to, like, smack you with something. I thought those shows were, did, did a fine job of doing it. I do think you are correct that some things, they grab a hold of it and they say, well, let's shake this up a bit. Let's swap characters out. I don't think that's the case with Star Trek. Right? You're complaining about poor writing, though. You're mad about something you don't even realize that you're mad about, which is every bit as bad as woke. Right, I think Creature's approaching it probably better. Like, that's just bad writing if they just do that. They just swap a character out for a different version. Like, they go into the character creator and they're like, well, we need a different race or or gender or sexual identity. So yeah, let's just swap this character out. And you're like, wait a minute, but that's not what it's like. Yeah, I know. Rings of Power. I know. It's this week. Everybody's got that on their mind. That is not something I'm in support of. I don't think Star Trek asking philosophical questions is that. Like, I don't think that's woke. I don't think that's... I call it diversity dust. When you just sprinkle diversity dust on an existing piece of property, I just think that that's stupid. And it's clearly not working. It just gets criticized. Even people that would like more representation in the entertainment world are like, that's not how you do it. They're like, what are you doing? It's ineffective. That's not what we want to see. Woke has become like aloha. It means whatever it needs to be in order to fit the narrative. In my opinion, it's a crutch to sound relevant and not engage beyond the most superficial take. Right. The irony is, is like diversity does is some superficial drive-by thing to try to get people to watch a show or a movie. And the calling everything woke is also very superficial. It's just a drive-by. You're not actually getting down to the meat of the problem. Right. Did they write the character poorly? Did they create an unbelievable character arc? Was it too fast? Was the pacing bad? Like, when I break down a Star Wars movie and I try to tell you all the problems with it, or Obi-Wan or whatever, I don't just say, it's bad, it sucks. Like, do you guys remember that? There was a time where where in gaming, in gaming circles, people would just say, oh, that game sucks. And a lot of people started saying, well, wait, can you explain why it sucks? It just sucks. Then you started getting thoughtful analysis from reviewers and YouTubers that would say, well, controls are clunky and not responsive. The story pacing is a little weird. The combat loop is very redundant, and you do the same thing in too close succession. They started analyzing like the psychological you know, input or effect a game has on a person, and with familiarity breeding contempt, you have to be careful with the content loop and mechanisms and ways that you have the player feeling strong and awesome, right? You start breaking down why a game is good or bad. And I feel like a lot of times people don't do that. They're like, it's woke! Why? Well, there's a strong woman and she's just talking and stuff. And it's like, what? That's not... what. Okay, but break down break it down for me i did that with she hulk's pilot by the way i broke down my problem with it it wasn't just that it was it's woke it's like no it just got unnecessarily preachy and kind of inaccurate it was like that's not representative of reality that you're you're trying to speak about a reality but you're speaking about it in a way that's not representative of reality right that's true, I don't mind it at all, but in a story or show, they force it rather than let it be natural. So the question is, Starfield, according to the composer, the Starfield story is central, and it's philosophical, and you're going to be presented with questions. And the first thing I thought of was Star Trek. 
Can you watch Star Trek The Next Generation and not feel like your hackles being raised as a 2022 person that feels that every show is trying to preach at you? Like, if that's the way that you feel, I'm not saying that's the reality. I don't think every show is trying to preach at you. I think some shows do. I think they go way overboard. I think it ends up hurting the, I think it ends up hurting the storytelling. Star Trek wasn't woke, just a good show. Same for Brooklyn Nine-Nine and other shows. They, uh, but other shows, however, do seem to force diversity where it doesn't make sense. Star Trek Next Generation presented valid and genuine philosophical questions while Woke just does cheap and terrible delivery of statements to get you to accept it, calling it progressive. Rip character limit. I actually think what you just typed is excellent. Presenting valid and genuine philosophical questions is not the same as cheap and terrible delivery of statements to get you to accept it. I actually think that's a very good way of thinking about it. Is the show just putting out statements and as I said, almost sort of preaching at you or are they presenting you with a very cool, well-crafted philosophical conundrum? What would you do in this situation? You're the captain of a starship. You come across this planet and this co- this this alien race has this way of thinking and being and behaving and you think it's wrong. What do you do? Because you've got the You've got the guiding principles of, of, of uh, Starfield, right? You can't do certain things. Because of the Prime Directive, which was such a great way to do this. It, it kept them from this sort of ad hoc episode thing where, well, in this episode, Riker's going to shoot everybody. And in the next episode, he's not going to do that. Like, right? Like, the Prime Directive creates this barrier of you can't do certain things and I think it was it's it's wonderfully thought out and it creates really great episodes there you know is this bad versus yeah this is terrible I think I'm okay with preachy sometimes but the problem is from a writing perspective I think it's far more effective and actually better storytelling to let it be subversive if you just like almost look at the camera and you're like man that really stinks guys hating somebody because of what they look like that's really bad okay it's like i'm in some like 90s instructional video like i'm going through orientation a new business and they they bring in the tv with the vhs like yeah you gotta watch this crap before you work here all right see you in 20 minutes and they're like Tell us what Jane did wrong in this scenario. And Jane's like, I really don't like Susan because, well, you know, she's black. Can you tell us what's wrong with what Jane did? And you're like, oh my gosh, what the frick is this garbage? When it feels like that, I get why people are like, what is this? What is this woke trash? When really they should be saying, it's just bad writing. It's just bad writing. It's not, the, it's not, it's, I don't think it's effective to just call everything woke. Analyze the problems. Is it the pacing? Is it the writing? Is it the delivery? Is it the acting? There's nothing wrong with having a TV show that attacks these things that are happening. Right? You know, you go, you have somebody going to a coffee shop and somebody's got, you know, pronouns on their name tag and you have this big, huge blow up in this preachy scene. No one's going to want to watch that. They're gonna be like, I just feel like you're preaching at me. But if you created a scene with tension and you create a scene that was like, man, I, I, I get what they're doing here. This is, this is interesting. Let's see what the characters do. That's what Star Trek does in Star Trek The Next Generation. And I think one of the greatest things they achieved in Star Trek is you're not thinking about the day-to-day issues. Why? Well, because they use aliens to do it, right? It's not somebody walking through Harlem in the middle of night, like clutching their purse, and it's some cliche stereotype from our reality. It's they're aliens, they're alien races. So you, you, you let your guard down a little bit. And then you're like, oh, what's that sensation? Oh no, I'm thinking, I'm analyzing. Like you start thinking and analyzing what they're doing in the story. And I I got news for you. I think Starfield, 
if you're just tuning in. The Starfield news is that the story is going to be very philosophical and present you with questions. And the reason we're talking like woke and Star Trek is that was the first thing I thought. I was like, this is going to feel like Star Trek. You're going to be presented with problems that'll make you make a choice. That uncomfortable thing of like, neither of these choices are that great, right? I don't remember people calling Mass Effect woke when you could romance same gender across gender species. It was just a good game with some really cool options. It's all an execution, Victor. I really, I truly believe that these days. I truly believe that the people running around with the woke stamp and they're like, kapunk, woke, kapunk, woke, and anything that smells a certain way, they're like, it's woke, right? I think a lot of them would probably not detect what you're doing if, if your execution was better. I do. I think some of these companies and some of these writers and directors have had really, really good intentions. They've had great intentions and it all goes awry because they do it terribly. Yeah, GT, yeah, exactly. GTA 6 is already being called woke. Thank you for bringing that one up. We literally covered GTA 6 And there was one line from like a 10 paragraph article, one line about jokes and not punching down. And everyone's like, it's going woke. It's like, what? They're calling it Grand Theft Auto 6. You know what I mean? They're not calling it run around and hug someone. You know, (laughs) the game is literally named after a crime. (laughs) In Highway Robbery 7, we decided to get rid of certain stereotypes and certain jokes. Why are you doing that? still called Highway Robbery. I still think you're going to be doing crime. We were just talking about this with the poor writing that attempts to project female power. Uh, If you have to have make your male characters look like idiots for your female characters to look cool, you've written a poor story. Your female lead's not powerful. Your male characters are dummies. It's a massive fail in writing and a complete disservice to women. Look look at She-Hulk versus Game of Thrones or Vikings. This is such a good point. Yes. Analyze why it's happening. What's problem with the writing? The success of Game of Thrones and the success of Vikings shows that people in mass will get behind strong female characters. They don't give a frick. They don't care. Make good writing. Look at Ripley in Aliens. Nobody, nobody gives a frick. Look at Sarah Connor in Terminator. No one was like, I can't get behind it. It's a woman. No. It worked because it felt raw and real and it didn't feel some it didn't feel like some concocted bogus story where the you know the husband's like spilling coffee on the carpet and the mom's like oh tad like it doesn't have that cliche all the men are dumb dumbs and this woman's just gotta suffer through her day with men like the second wonder woman was like that the second wonder woman was that way it's like what are you doing she's a god the first movie was awesome and the second movie feels very much like this is what it's like to live in a man's world and it's just like what the frick is all this so i get it i get why people get upset but i think you're cutting yourself off from having actual dialogue and solid criticism by being like it's woke like we'll break down the writing and the problems with the characters don't just call it that you're actually not helping. You're not actually breaking down the issues and saying, here's why it's bad. What's wrong with She-Hulk? I'll be honest. I watched the ep- episode one and I don't really care right now. To, uh, my wife and I are playing Returnal in the evenings. I finally got a second PlayStation and a really nice second TV. Playing Returnal with my wife's way more interesting than that very mid-show. I watched the, I watched the pilot and it was fine, but it was very mid and when she started preaching about how it's infinitely harder to deal with anger as a woman, I wanted to shut the dadgum thing off. I was like, no, it's not. We all have our own struggles with emotions and the spectrum of human experience and the spectrum of humans and their emotional capacities claiming stake on it's infinitely harder to deal with anger because you're a woman and you have to deal with, you know, office politics and dum-dums in the workplace. Shut the frick up. Like, that's not true. Like, don't preach at me about how it's infinitely harder to deal with anger. Just shut up. You're, 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 you're talking nonsense. 
it made me not want to watch a show because it's like this is the centrality this is the centrality of your character's identity some like whiny victim like oh it's so hard like shut up that's not impressive at all you're like oh oh woe is you she's talking to a guy who's been dealing with being the hulk for over a decade by the way when she says it yeah I know the entire world wanted to kill you and you had to leave planet Earth and live somewhere else for a while and then come back and then when you came back we all almost died and it was up to you and you did this crazy amount of sacrificial thing to your body you know that could have killed you I know you've literally been through what would amount to be like I don't know eight trips to hell and back but listen there are people that are rude to me in the office because I'm a woman and that's infinitely harder shut the frick up how bad could your writing be like how bad could your writing be you're talking to Bruce Banner shut up it was awful <clears throat> my wife is playing days gone now on the TV so so fun backseating while she plays Maybe she whole series is doing a redemption arc, i.e. she has a, she was a self-centered petty person to begin with, but becomes an altruistic hero later on. I hope that's the case, at least. I certainly hope so, because if episode one is supposed to be a very quick summary of her origin story, I was like, you sound like a whiny baby. Forgot about the TV fun yesterday. Keep up the great content. Thank you for the 10 spot, Jack Hopton. That puts us at 135. Thank you. That's very kind. There's a lot of interjected comparisons to her being better than men. Uh, I like a lot of Marvel stuff. It's so blatant here. I was surprised. And here's the thing, Infinite. We do a better job breaking down why She-Hulk is failing as a story like what I just did. Like actually zooming out on what she stated and zooming out on like who she's talking to in the grand scheme of the of the character arc and the meta narrative of Marvel. We do a far better job than just being like, it's woke trash you just sound like some dumb 4chan reddit drone who doesn't have the ability to thoughtfully analyze anything yeah we're covering that in the second show vigil that's why i was late today i had to type up a whole show because we got great new info on god of war ragnarok stay tuned for that that's our second show do me a favor we've had a really really great start to the day it'd be in it'd be even better if we had 300 likes okay 461 people here. I guarantee you there's a hundred of you that haven't clicked like yet. It is free to click like. It's also free to click click subscribe. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe to my channel. We are currently really trying to figure out what would motivate people to convert to a member. What type of content do you want to see? We're doing daily extra talk shows for members and the Friday night streams with my wife and community game nights. You get extra talk shows and then you get like a fun Friday night. What more would you need to become a member is the question we're asking. Because a lot of you are here all the time. You enjoy the content. You lurk. We really want to see that member climb. That member floor needs to get to about 2,000 members. This week, we have a member goal of 1,500. If we get about 300 more members before Friday night, my wife and I will play a very fun and very inappropriate game for members. (laughs) Love the shirt. Thank you. If you ever like my shirt, don't forget to check out 80s Tees. This comes from their Star Wars collection, and you can use my code LONO over there for 30% off. So, why are we talking about She-Hulk? Why are we talking about Star Trek? And why are we talking about Woke? Okay, let me catch you up if you just tuned in. The latest Starfield news was that the story details in the game size were pretty significant. Number one, the story details were it's going to be very philosophical, and it's, pre- it's going to present you with questions, conundrums, things you have to kind of wrestle with and figure out there's gonna be philosophical moments in the game and then the game size we'll get to that in a little while when this this opening conversation fizzles out the opening conversation has been great by the way you guys have been respectful and awesome even though you're not agreeing or i'm not agreeing or we're not all seeing eye to eye i still think it's been a great discussion if you like lively debate make sure and hit subscribe because again i am safe for work you you might have noticed that we're not in here swearing up a storm so you can throw me on in the background my man smashville viking is saying look i'm gonna do the first five gifted memberships If you can't claim gifted memberships, click the join button or the dollar sign to get into memberships. And when that pop-up window shows you all the tiers to join, click the three dots at the top, go to your gift options and make sure it's on. If it's already on, turn it off, back out, and then go back in again and turn it back on. You might have to turn it off, save it, and turn it back on again. 
clicking join and going into that member window and those three dots and those gift options certain people are having to do that to claim these gifted members thank you smashville that's very generous go through that process if you're trying to claim those memberships so the reason that we're talking about woke star trek and she hulk is because when I heard that the Starfield story was going to be very philosophical and present you with questions and, and, and things to wrestle with, the first thing I thought of was Star Trek. No ads. Becoming a member doesn't get rid of ads, but I don't run ads. And a great way to keep me from running ads in the middle of the show is to become a member of gift members. There we go. They're all getting claimed really fast. I love seeing them get claimed that fast. That's what we want to see. So Snow, Nolan, Vax, Lone Wolf, and Ryusaki, all five grabs memberships. There you go. Make sure you get in the Discord. That's pushing us a little bit closer to the member goal. Thank you. Five new members just like that. If you guys feel like going on a little member train, go for it. There's lots of people here. We have a very full stream right now. It's the perfect time to gift members. And I started thinking that the Starfield story... Sounds a lot like Star Trek. I've been re-watching Star Trek Next Generation with my wife, and it's very philosophical. It's very, what would you do in this scenario? Okay? And I had somebody tell me that Strange New Worlds is super woke. And I thought, I've heard nothing but good things from Star Trek fans about that. Yo, my man, jumping in all on his own. That's what we want to see. I really want to see people jump in without needing the gifteds. If you can afford the five bucks a month, jump in the member pool so you can make room for the people that cannot afford a membership. They're here all the time. They love the show, but some folks just can't afford it right now. If you can afford it, jump in like uh, Invicta just did. It makes space for others when the gifted members go out. Enjoy the dope badge and emotes, Invicta. You're dope and you deserve dope stuff. Guys, don't forget to get into the Discord. You won't miss out on members-only content if you're hanging out in there. Strange, Strange New Worlds is like the greatest hits of Star Trek. I've seen nothing but praise for Strange New Worlds. But, you know, this guy says it's woke or whatever. And I said, in my show open, I said, if the Starfield story gets too philosophical, people are going to accuse it of being woke. Because it's become this one-size-fits-all criticism for, I don't really like the presence of others or other viewpoints in my games. I'm calling it woke. To be perfectly honest, I've never heard someone say something that is philosophical as woke. I've only ever heard people talking about those people. Yo, a 17-month milestone from a man Fonzo, and it's a tier 2. Keep on keeping on. Good stuff going on. We also were asking the question yesterday in the member stream, what would convince people to upgrade to tier 2? Uh, what would convince you to upgrade to tier 2? And I was going to like launch a whole new segment for tier 2 members, right? I was going to launch a whole new segment. And we ended up not doing that because nobody, no, not very many people converted. So I was curious if maybe I just started uploading like really short form funny content, more like vlogging content only for tier two and above. Would that make people convert up to tier two? Would that make people convert to a membership in general? Do you guys like that kind of content? Let us know in the comments below or in the discord. Lono, as a right side, I tend to be more sensitive about philosophical ideologies. This is why I'm calling it woke. I may have people agree with me. So, I'm curious, Donovan, a lot of games, a lot of games, put forth super strong male character fighting against evil, and destroying that evil, oftentimes they are rescuing a woman. That's a very common trope in stories. Does that bother you? at all yo von raz coming in with a membership that's what we want to see man that's what i want to see keep this member train going who else wants to jump in you see those members at the top of the chat click join and join that member train or click the dollar sign and give some members let's keep this train going man it's the only way we're going to hit those milestones you guys are the best what happens in the members talk shows it's literally like a behind the curtain talk we talk about the day, the shows, our plans, what you guys are doing, what I'm doing. It's just a lot more personal. It's not business. It's not all business. We're not on like a gaming topic. Sometimes we get into gaming topics and debates. It's kind of a free-for-all. It's a common trope still expected of men today. I don't know why it would bother anyone. You're expected to be strong and rescue people today? Yeah, that's expected of you?
Well, that's enough for me. Buckets full of senseless W-sers uh, to last me a month. Starfield news would be nice. Of course. I man. What was the last story uh, like that? I mean, I don't know because I typically play RPGs where you create your own character, male or female, and you save the world. Well, this is another common trope in video games. The chosen one. You're the chosen one. Like, you get ripped out of your reality and go to another reality or, like, someone finds you and is basically like, you're the chosen one. You, 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 you have the power to save all of us. That's another real common trope. Are you okay with that? You think that's a cool... You think that's a cool trope in storytelling? Is that an acceptable... <clears throat> philosophical ideology? Because it's got its roots in something, and I wonder if anybody's smart enough to pick it out. <laughs> Needs to go. I'm not a fan of it, because it's all the time. Right? It's all the time. It's like, you're the chosen one. You're supposed to save everybody didn't work out for Vader I remember Wizard of Oz that's what you think of no that's not what it is come on it's super super clear in Superman where his dad tells him you can save them you can save all of them humanity's weak but they can be shown the way come on one person is supposedly gonna save everybody the chosen one you don't, you don't think that's even the least bit inspired by religious iconography? <laughs> Whether it's Jesus or any other religious figure, the one person coming out, showing up at just the right time. It's an archetype from religious iconography. I don't, I'm not trying to blow your mind at 10 o'clock in the morning eastern standard time but it's a messianic reference it totally is even if you're jewish it's a messianic reference the chosen one will come and save the day it's religious iconography like so you have all these video games that are steeped in that common narrative trope whether it's Luke Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker, whether it's Harry Potter, whether it's, you know, even Forspoken has that as a trope. She gets kind of ripped out of her world and she's the one that can save them and help them. What was the one in the desert with the guy, uh, John, oh golly frick. It was such a like cliche name. What was his name? His name wasn't John Connor, but it was a name like that. Yeah, Lies of P, Elden Ring. It's you. You're the one. You're the one that's going to save the day. It's some of the oldest storytelling of humanity. That's right. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. You you think that that's okay. John Carter, thank you. I couldn't think of it because it's such a throwaway name. Yeah, John Carter. You're okay with that ideology, because number one I will admit I will readily admit it's pretty generic and it touches like virtually every religion in the world for the most part right it 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 it, it seriously does um and so I PL are you being sarcastic about that guy and when you say putting all these females in games and movies are downgrading men are you being Please tell me you're being, like, satirical with that statement. My gosh. So, you're okay with that. I know it's more generic, but I do think you're okay with that just because it's more familiar. It's more familiar. Can you scroll up and read my other chat? I was apologizing for my illogical thinking, not defending it. I was saying that I was being one-sided and not truly thinking about the difference of philosophy and woke ideologies. (coughs) Oh, he was being sarcastic. Okay, I was going to say, PL said something earlier that was really thoughtful. I was like, my gosh, that's got to be satire. Instead of seeing a show or game where the main character isn't just ripped from their life and you will save the day, I'd like to see a progression into actually having a place uh, in the situation of causing and changing events for the story and toward the end. 
Now that I think about it, every game is woke. (laughs) Every, like, here's the thing you have to understand. Every story that you read, every movie that you watch, every show that you consume, every video game narrative that you take part in, they all have a worldview. They have a view. They have an anthropology. They have a view of man. They have a view of reality. They have a view of what's wrong, what's the solution, what's right, what's good, what's evil. It's all there. The real reason that you put up with it in most games is because it's not as deducible. If it's too plain as day, if it's too preachy, if it's too in your face, it's not about, well, this is being woke. It's this is put together so poorly that I can totally see your slip. Your slip is showing is like an old term, right? It's like, I can totally see what you're doing. The man's not behind the curtain. He's standing in front of it and he's yelling into a microphone. It's not, it's not subtle. There's no subtlety. What is your opinion on video games costing $70 with no single player campaign multiplayer only? Are you talking about the abysmal battlefield launch? Lono fired Hilly to bring Madam on board. Hilly shows up once a month for community game night. So Hilly still shows up on Friday nights. He just, it was too much of a demand on his personal life because that time of day for him, he's basically staying up till like three or four in the morning and drinking and hanging out with me and then trying to wake up on a Saturday and hang out with his family. Like he can do that once a month, but every Friday was a bit much. So the Starfield news that we're covering is that the story is going to be extremely philosophical. It's going to present you with questions. And as I said multiple times, that makes me think of Star Trek. Could we get 40 more likes on this video? We're almost to the one hour mark. Let's start the first hour with 300 likes. Big turnout today. Thank you for being here and discussing this. Our second show will be about Ragnarok combat details. Spider-Man Miles Morales would probably be the best example. No, not because he's half uh, he's half black, half PR, a Puerto Rican, sorry, but because they straight up put political statements in the game. Are you saying it's an example of they went too far or they did it in a way that was okay? I didn't play Miles Morales to completion. I didn't have time. I was enjoying it when I played it. Maybe they will have a dilemma where the Earth has been cleared for destruction to make way for a space highway and you can either let it happen... Uh, for faster load times or save Earth. You think Miles Morales went too far. I don't know if I've had anybody say that about that game, about Miles, about Spider-Man's Miles Morales, the video game. Now, the other piece of news, right? The other piece of news, because that's the first hour of the show. The other piece of news is about the game size. Starfield game size is set to be twice as big as the biggest game from Bethesda. Now, I don't know what the biggest game is. I don't know if you guys can weigh in on this. My research showed me that it was Skyrim, then Fallout 4 was bigger than Skyrim, then Fallout 76 was four times bigger than Fallout 4. So it sounds like, now somebody's saying Daggerfall. Is Daggerfall bigger than Fallout 76? Because I've got a lot of questions right now. Daggerfall by map size. Okay, so two of you are saying Daggerfall. No, Skyrim is not their biggest. Fallout 4 is actually bigger than Skyrim. And then Fallout 76 is four times larger than that. So it's like Skyrim, Fallout 4, boom, Fallout 76. And I got people telling me Daggerfall is bigger. The biggest game from Bethesda was Daggerfall. Thank you, Dark Knight. I've been seeing a lot of your comments when I'm not live, Dark Knight. Thanks for watching the VODs and leaving comments. I appreciate that engagement. So the Starfield game size is apparently then at least, according to the composer, it's at least twice the size of Daggerfall. Is Daggerfall isn't exactly uniquely large, right? It's like procedurally generated. Aren't there limitations to the map at some point? Don't you run to the edge? What the heck is even Daggerfall, right? You missed my reference. Hang on, what Dalton say? He didn't get the Hitchhiker's uh, Guide to the Galaxy reference. Maybe they will have a dilemma. Oh, 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 oh. I'm not familiar with that story. Sorry. 
ESO is a Bethesda game and it's pretty huge. We were debating that in the Discord. Is is the Elder Scrolls Online considered a Bethesda game? And then would we compare the size of Starfield to the Elder Scrolls? Like I don't know. Daggerfall is the largest map size, but Fallout 76 is the most filled in terms of map content, says Detective Seeds. Isn't ESO larger, or is that not a fair comparison? I don't know if when he said this, he was considering ESO a Bethesda title. This is the exact this is the exact statement from the article. Starfield is at least twice the size of the biggest game Bethesda Game Studios has ever made, claims the game composer. Bethesda Game Studios, did they make ESO? I don't think that ESO would be counted as a game quote unquote made by Bethesda Game Studios. So I don't think we can count that one. I agree. Miles Morales went too far with all the persons, uh, person of color. I hate that term. Declaring him our Spider-Man as a Peter doesn't put his life on the line for all of New York. Yeah, I think claiming him as our Spider-Man is kind of stupid. Like, that's not why Miles exists. Miles exists because he also got bit. He doesn't exist so that you can have your own Spider-Man. Like, quick, put up the Spider-Man signal. Why? Well, we're being robbed. Well, okay, why wouldn't we put up the Miles Morales Spider-Man signal? Well, he's not our Spider-Man. Like, that's just dumb. I don't know anybody that's doing that. Did they do that in the game, or are you just saying people in general did that? I don't think that, I don't think that that's a thing. In the game, is it? ESO is Zenimax, where Fallout 76 is Bethesda Game Studios. So this guy in his mind is either thinking about, he's either thinking about the, he's thinking about, hang on, he's either thinking about Daggerfall, or he's thinking about, or he's thinking about Fallout 76. That takes, that takes ESO off the, uh, off the table. They say it in the game. Do they say it in the game, William, in a way that's representative of something that people would do, or is it meant to be like a, a, a claim? Do you understand? So there's a difference between descriptive and prescriptive, and I think sometimes people forget this. So, like, the reason I cited Modern Family and Brooklyn Nine Nine, those shows were descriptive. They were merely showing you, uh, like, it was like a description, a slice of life. Like, this is what life is like. There are people like this. Was it descriptive? There are people that would say this. There are people that would do this. Or is it prescriptive? Is it saying, oh yes, Miles Morales is our Spider-Man. Do you, see, do you understand the, the, the distinction that I'm making? Developed by ZeniMax and published by Bethesda Softworks. Well, that, that wouldn't count anyways because this is, says Bethesda Game Studios. So ESO can't count. There's no way. A guy stands up and declares in full focus of the camera and people cheer. It isn't like the people of Harlem are saying he's our Spider-Man. I mean, William Long is saying that a detective... Oh, a guy. Sorry, not a detective. A guy stands up in full focus of the camera and people cheer. Golly, I would just need to see it in context. Because I... I, Like, that's tough. That's tough. Is it descriptive? Or is it prescriptive is it something that is establishing how something should be is it making a declaration of you know opinion or is it like representative of reality or like oh yeah people would definitely do that people would definitely take that mindset and that attitude one guy said Miles is his Spider-Man. Guys, we have been live for one hour and they really want us to run advertisements on the hour and I don't think that that's conducive to a live environment. So can you do all the things that are free? Smash the like button and hit subscribe. It's free to do that. And then consider doing the things that support the channel monetarily. Become a member for five bucks. Give some members. Do a super chat. I, I think that's more conducive to the live environment. Typically when you watch a video on YouTube, there's an ad beginning, middle, and end. That's only going to happen on my live streams when I'm not live. We put an ad like every 30 minutes. Like, that's it. So, consider supporting the channel monetarily if you're here all the time and you can't afford it. Okay, that's 
That's all we ask. Can't say what they mean, only what they did. I appreciate that thoughtful response. That's, man, you, okay, I like you. Come here every day. Uh, Daggerfall is 80,000 square miles. Fallout 76,000 square miles. One's clearly more impressive than the other here. So they're very close. If Butter's information is correct, 4,000 square miles of difference. Fallout 76 is probably the more impressive of the two, right? So I would say that they're thinking when this when this gentleman says that the Starfield game size or star the Starfield size is going to be at least twice as big as the biggest game created by Bethesda Game Studios. Yeah, Bethesda Game Studios. He has those games in mind. I would say roughly when running around on the 76 map, maybe it's two times as big as Fallout 3, even though 4 is probably bigger. No, according to my research panic, Fallout 76 is four times bigger than Fallout 4. 76 is 120 square miles. Oh, oh, oh. I read that is 76, 120. I misread your comment, Butters. Oh my gosh. So Dagger Falls, 80,000 square miles. Fallout's 120. Well, then this guy's... I, I have to rephrase everything I just stated. He's definitely thinking of Dagger Fall then. He has to be thinking of Dagger Fall. There's a thousand planets. It doesn't mean map size. Homie. When you say Starfield is at least twice the size of the biggest game Bethesda Game Studios has ever made, claims the game's composer, he's not talking about install size. Why the frick would the composer be talking about the install size? In an interview about the size of the game and the Starfield story, he's talking about the install size? No, he's talking about size of the game. How big is the game? How many places can you travel to? That he has to have Daggerfall in mind because you can go to a thousand planets. Just scope. Okay, you can interpret it that way. I'm not interpreting it that way. We can move on. I, I don't want to have that. That's 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 just a worthless and pedantic debate. I don't I don't think so. I don't think that's worth saying. Oh, the scope. Why would you why would you make a comparison? Here's our biggest game we've ever made. This game's gonna be twice the size of it. What are you referring to? just sort of generically the scope what he's probably thinking the music is twice the size yes as he transitions from talking about the size of the game to the story and the story being philosophical maybe he just means the music in the story is philosophical bro maybe they mean content though I think Daggerfall will be smaller this game has to be that big of necessity it has to be that big there's a thousand planets I don't think what he's saying is just fluff I think he's being accurate I think this game is roughly going to be twice the size of Daggerfall's map yeah Daggerfall's 149 meg that's what he means going to be a 300 meg game if he's talking about map size knowing Bethesda and their bad asset compression into archives Bethesda's bad with this the game will probably be 600 gig I guarantee you that's not how it's going to operate. There's no way. There's no way. This is probably spewing hot air, in my opinion. Okay. In gigs, 4K is 4X 1080. I get compression is improved, but install size should be at least Warzone. Did he mention Daggerfall? No, he didn't mention Daggerfall. He, what he said led us to go and research, like, okay, what would be considered Bethesda's biggest game? We don't know what he's saying is twice the size of. Again, this is pedantic and worthless. I'm moving on. The question on the table is, if this is in fact that large of a game, you got a thousand planets, we're, we're doing a thought experiment. If, if that's in fact what he's referring to, since, you know, it's speculation on our part, right, that's exactly right. We're having a discussion based on speculation. Welcome to the present instead of wasting time in whatever we were just doing. 
That's what we're doing right now. Yes, we are speculating that he's basically saying this game is going to be twice the size of Daggerfall. It's going to be a massive game. There's going to be so many places to go. Is that a problem? Like, do you think the game being that big, does it cause concern? Is it exciting? Like, where do you land on game size? Like, when a game is touting being this big, potentially, if, if, if he's not just blowing hot air, I mean, they told us there's going to be a thousand planets. So this isn't the first time we've heard somebody claim the game's massive, right? Tons of people, like, you know what I mean? I can't speculate that it's scope. You're not very good at this. I'm not going to have a pedantic debate with you about what he might have meant. That's not a fruitless discussion. It makes more sense to say, it sounds to me like... He's confirming what a lot of us already thought. This game's going to be humongous. A thousand planets, and now this guy's saying it's going to be twice the size of the biggest game they've ever built, right? What what, is that? Is that going to be diluted and thin and dull? Is it encouraging? You're like, oh my gosh, this sounds really great. Like, what do you think as a gamer? Like, I don't, I, I don't think it's an interesting debate to try to slice what we think he means, right? I don't think that's an interesting debate. For the Series S, yes. <laughs> For reference, Star Citizen is 1 million kilometers by 1 million kilometers. Shout out to Lono and the chat. Thank you, Rich Swag Lord. I like to have the opportunity to turn on pointless in-game... What? Thanks for the amazing content. Silver Shadow, thank you for doing the $5 Super Chat tip. I appreciate that. If Bethesda's making a game big just to claim that it's big, or are they adding good substance along with the size? This has been a debate since the beginning. The Starfield 1000 Planets, that's been a debate since that got said. He's talking about physical, explorable space. That's how I take his statement. Like, I don't think he would state this, and by the way, he approved their article. He wouldn't just do an interview and not approve the article. Okay? He stated that the size of the game is at least twice the size of the biggest game Bethesda Game Studios has ever made. So it's at least twice the size. So when you say that, I don't think he's speaking generically. I think he's saying, yeah, th- the way they had to build this, the number of planets, the number of places you can go, yeah, this is going to be this is going to be twice as big as anything we've ever built before. By space, I don't mean outer space. Right, right, right. Physical on the ground walking around space. I know I knew I know what you mean. Is scope even a measurable metric? How can you assume he means twice as big in scope? Yo, good morning, Birdface. Empyrean Galactic Survival has fifteen thousand star galaxies in it, and the game and it's an independent game studio. If they can do it with less support, I'm sure Bethesda can do it. Okay, so commonly, No Man's Sky is criticized for tons of planets, and they all feel the same. I think the criticism is pretty empty, but let's imagine that that's something that people experience. I'm not going to try to invalidate somebody's experience and be like, you didn't experience that. I think people overstate that reality. Okay, but let's just imagine that that's a thing that, that maybe No Man's Sky struggles with sometimes you go to your 100th planet and you're like yeah i've kind of been here before okay so do you think that's a potential problem when you create a thousand planets are they all going to start to feel redundant or stretch too thin or dull this is something that people have been concerned about since the beginning and this guy's kind of doubling down he's like man starfield game size is freaking enormous Will you get swallowed by futility? Like, before No Man's Sky even came out, I said that. I was like, a giant game with 18 quintillion planets and trying to get to the center of the universe? Am I going to get swallowed by futility? Am I ever going to feel like I'm actually doing anything? And look at how they've answered that. It's more about now crafting and building and investing in certain storylines and certain trajectories and certain progression systems. They've always made big games. They aren't making it at uh, at this, that size just because a space game is in for what are they good for as a studio team? I'm not sure what the end of that sentence kind of fell apart on me. I'm with here as I would hate to keep visiting empty planets, but 
you'd have to know they put tons of empty planets in just for modders to make more content. Todd, there was a Todd Howard interview where he also made it very clear that you're going to know when a planet's got nothing on it. Only worry is it's amazing to scale, but it's no bigger than 76 when it comes to good locations. Oh, so you're worried it's going to be bigger, but like it's just going to be bland? I hope they have a lot of reasons to explore. If you played the mod Legacy of the Dragonborn, uh, you know the main faction in Starfield has huge potential. Starfield's main quest will be around 20% bigger uh, what's the headline? Then Fallout 4 and Skyrim. So 20% bigger with respect to the main quest. So yeah, this guy's not talking about story. This Scope equals quest branches, NPCs you can interact with and things like that. That's much more interesting than map size. Sup, brah? You look handsome. Yo, what's good, Andrew? Yo, my man William Long decided not just to have thoughtful commentary in the chat. He says, I'm going to step up and get involved. I'm a member now. Enjoy the dope badge and emotes. Make sure you get in the Discord. Guys, our Discord is basically members only. The entire Discord has got rooms, places for you to meet people. If you want to hang out with this community when I'm not live, and make sure you get alerts when I go live with content, make sure you get in the Discord. Consider becoming a member today. We are really saying, hey, that's a big thing we want to push, and we're asking for feedback. What would make you convert to be a member? What type of content would you like to see? We do members-only content. We do an extra talk show every day for members. What more would you like to see? Here's a quote from that article that Vicar just showed me about the Starfield main quest being 20% bigger than Fallout and Skyrim. He says, We usually aim for around that length. If you look at our previous games, but this one's ending up a little bit longer, explains Howard in an interview with IGN. We may tune that sum still with more quests, so it might be 20% more than our previous ones. Your mileage may vary because people don't generally straight line it, but with our previous ones, if you aim for, let's say, a 25-hour main quest, this one might be in the 30s, maybe 40s, just for the main quest that's freaking huge man Zubair says go watch the quarry streams I need a quarry command I think we made one didn't did we not we made a quarry command uh yeah we have one is Starfield trying to compete with No Man's Sky no it's not I don't think so Starfield setting itself out to be a according to the composer the Starfield story is going to be like really philosophical and it's super central it's super super central to the game now my first impressions of the game was that the story is like it's there if you want to do it and there's characters to talk to but it's a space RPG man you can go do whatever you want you want to be Han Solo? You want to be Captain Picard? Do it. Like, it didn't seem like it was going to be having this sort of thoughtful story in it. Now, that might have been me projecting onto the trailer how I might play the game. Maybe I'm going to be Han Solo. Maybe I'm going to try and make my ship look like the Millennium Falcon. Maybe I want to be Captain Picard and hire a bunch of staff people and have my ship humming like a an exploration machine and we're constantly you know, going out and seeking out new life and new civilizations, right? I, maybe I was projecting a little bit. But the, the, the vibe I got from their gameplay reveal, it didn't seem like story was uh, this big central focus. And we spent the first hour of the show debating if they go philosophical, because if you go back and rewatch Star Trek The Next Generation, it's a very philosophical show, constantly placing people in what would you do scenarios? What would you do here? What would you do in this? Like all these thought experiments, essentially, is what it sort of feels like. Is that going to get accused of being quote unquote woke? Right? That was the question that we beat around in the first, you know, hour of the show. Is that going to be something that happens? And we kind of bait, debated on what that means and why I feel like the terms may be being overused. And I actually do think, like the thumbnail states, I think they're taking a big risk. I think making a very big game with a story that's going to be sort of philosophical, I think is a big risk. Because like a lot of players, it, it might be totally lost on them. They might be like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't like it. I think it's woke. I think it's whatever. Games only have so much development time, story size, graphics, exploration, optimization, and gameplay. You can't have them all. 
imagine a woke space game will that even work it's my personal opinion that a lot of the people that shout and scream woke would watch Star Trek The Next Generation and they would think that it was if I had a way of tricking your eyes and you watched that show and you felt like it was a brand new show that just started airing today if I made it 16 by 9 and I made it 4k and I updated all the graphics I'd have to erase you know, Patrick Stewart from your memory because you'd be like why does he look so young if I had the ability to trick your mind you'd be like this is, there are people that would say, this is woke trash. That's what people would say about Star Trek The Next Generation. Not everybody. But I guarantee you there are people that would think that. And, in, and my point earlier was, rather than actually break down the writing and talk about why it's bad writing, why the directing, pacing, character development, or whatever is bad, people just want to slap it with that stamp and move on. And I just don't think that that's productive. The things that ring out to me are, quote, it's more than just another shooter or another RPG, and Starfield is a deep and philosophical game that will consume a lot of your existence. It certainly makes me try to look at the Starfield material through a different lens to adjust my expectations. Yeah, keep in mind the composer did say that as well. He says it's more than just another shooter or another RPG. I think that it's a risk for one reason, says CyberDNA. It's a single-player game, and if that size of the game doesn't have enough content or great immersion with NPCs, it's going to feel super empty. Or too long or too dull, like it's just stretched too thin, like dough that gets stretched too thin. People would have said that about the original Star Trek with Shatner low-key. Wasn't that the first interracial kiss on TV? Yes, it was. People of that day would have... Nowadays, nobody would think anything about that. They wouldn't think anything about the, the is uh, you know an interracial kiss, but at the, at the time that was a big deal. The next generation hits a broad spectrum with its message. New stuff is just targeted. The next generation is people are bad. Today's Star Trek is men are bad, and that leads to bad writing. So you think that the brand new show Strange New Worlds is actively arguing that men are bad in the show? It's getting high praise from Star Trek fans. It's getting it's getting hailed as great Star Trek but you're saying that the show is is communicating quite clearly that men are bad as the ship is the main character the guy they put on all the advertisements is a man so Captain Pike main character in the show very good looking man by the way they didn't pick some ruddy dumpy guy right they picked a very good looking man very classic looking dude chiseled jaw he's got his hair done nice very handsome he's the he's like the main character in all of the marketing i don't understand how that's that's leading to a show that's doing that is the crew constantly being like oh man like is that constantly happening Captain Pike's a total classical manly man. Yeah. I, I All the marketing was him. All the marketing was him. His name is Anson Mount. Oh, is that his name? I, I'm a fan of him. I, 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 I think he is. He is. He is quite handsome. Discovery did Strange New Worlds No, For real, the dude that plays Pike really looks awesome. Yeah, I, when I saw him cast and I saw the classic colors, I got very excited. Now, I heard that about Discovery, Birdface. I heard Discovery wasn't that great. I actually heard that the writing was bad. I didn't hear people calling it woke, but I heard people saying that the writing was pretty bad for Discovery. I heard Star Trek fans say that Discovery was not very good. I don't know what people want anymore. If it has women and minorities in the property, it's automatically woke. I don't agree with that no i think when it's blatantly obvious like a superficial like virtue grab i think people sometimes rightly say this seems kind of stupid like the diversity dust that they're sprinkling on rings of power uh, i i find the showrunners justification of their choices to be incredibly wanting it sounds like a bunch of superficial dumb decisions were made hoping to grab audience members because that's how they appeal to people right that's how they get people to watch Rings of Power. How do we how do we get minorities to watch the show? Make a great show. 
That's how. <laughs> I think I've switched to the dark side. Ooh. Zubair will be very happy, Anodyne Star. Oh, here's an order. First order of coffee for the day. Do two dark rows to Anodyne. Anodyne switching over to the team dark. Team light, team dark. Where do you land on our on our Reforge Roast coffee? It's our coffee, by the way. If you've never ordered our coffee, uh, check out ReforgeRoast.com. Use that coffee command in chat. Check it out. I think people that label things, uh, and that's dumb, a lot of the new stuff is superficial and token, but I'm not so quick to label crap. Just make good stuff and they will come. Right, yes, yeah, superficial and token. You're going to get agreement from me every time on that. When someone says they wanted the world of Tolkien to look like our world, I'm like, oh, shut the frick up. I'm not interested. Immediately not interested. That's not why I want to watch a Lord of the Rings show. You know? Are you, are you going to have somebody roll into the room in a wheelchair too? Like, there's people in wheelchairs. Like, are you going to somehow create that? Like, come on, man. Like, th- that's not how you make a good show by artificially changing story elements and characters because you want it to represent what the West looks like, which is hilariously geocentric in an ironic way. But, so like, sure, but I'm not going to get out some rubber stamp and go, woke! Like, I don't think that that's helpful. I think that's ironically and a lack of self-awareness. It's just as superficial. That's just as superficial and thoughtless as being like, Come watch Lord of the Rings. We there. One of the elves is black. Like, oh, come on. The disabled can't be represented in show. That's not what I said. Thank you for ripping that out of context and misrepresenting it. Sign of a weak position. I said when you're gonna make a Tolkien story, telling me you want the world of Tolkien to look like the world that we live in, I'm already tuned out. What is the point in going and making a fantasy novel into a show and being like, well, let's ham fist what the Western world looks like today? Huh? Like I said, it would seem really weird if they took that to its full conclusion and concocted some backstory for there to be a wheelchair in Middle Earth. Well, it looks like the world we live in, doesn't it? Get rid of the horses. Put some paved roads in there, too. Are you just going to roll someone in in on a wheelchair? Is that out of context? Yes, you've quite literally just demonstrated what happens when you rip a a comment out of context. Yes, that's the act of ripping something out of context, Dr. Red. Is this your first day debating me on the internet? Because you're acting like you just fell off the turnip truck. Like... Is this your first day? I said that in the context of making Middle Earth look like our world doesn't make any sense. Like forcing that into the story. It doesn't make any sense. It's literally a fantasy world. What movie are you making? It's a movie about this uh, crazy space planet with this really weird alien race and one guy ends up there. Cool. So what are you going to do? We're really going to make that planet look a lot like our world today. What the frick? Why? Sky with a $5 tip. Usually pretty positive, but I called someone a name in chat earlier and got my hackles raised. Just wanted to apologize. Send some support. Sky, thank you for the five spot and for owning that. I saw what you did. You bit that guy's head off. I was like, he's joking. It's satire. (laughs) That's not the woke thing. I think they're trying to give females the roles that usually men play to say we care. If there was a movie that man that a man played and now remake to a woman no. Right, they're learning that that doesn't work by the way. So if the disabled were represented in a way that fits into the fantasy element, that's what you're referring to. I'm referring to someone saying we want to make this world look more like our world. That intention is stupid it's literally a fantasy realm 
and trying to shove in Western racial diversity is dumb. It doesn't make any sense. You're attempting to do something that the actual book doesn't allow for. It's like, let's go to this other place and this other world and let's just have this great fantasy story. Well, we really want to make it look and represent our world. Why? It's antithetical to the story's existence. It's a fantasy realm. Like, this is why I think it doesn't help to be like, it's woke. No, analyze the intention and why it's unhelpful. Don't just call it woke trash. You're not making an argument. Don't just say it's a left or a right issue. No, 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 no. That's that's not helpful. You're not saying anything. You're doing the same thing they're guilty of. You're just doing some superficial drive-by thing because you know people will agree with you. And the wheelchair thing was just an example because when I was growing up, there was this book club thing called Book It. And they wanted people to design... A, a, a new character, right? And the Book It book club was very much diverse. You had basically every race represented. And it looking back, it was kind of comical how everybody approached it. Everybody was trying to grab all of the missing pieces of representation. So I think the artist that did our, our classes vote literally picked the one missing race and put him in a wheelchair. And it was just like, like good intentions, but this is just so painfully obvious. This is painfully not uh, a, a genuine, authentic way to create representation. Because the disabled are not mentioned explicitly in the story, that automatically precludes any mention of them being made in the future. Why? Because you feel they don't belong there? You're having a very hard time grappling with my argument because you're attempting to passively assert things about my argument that aren't there. That's underhanded and incredibly disingenuous. I'm not saying that I feel they don't belong there. I'm saying when you take a story, listen very carefully. You're, you're, really, you're really, really struggling to, to listen here. You're really struggling. Listen very carefully. I'm going to restate it for the fourth time because you don't seem to be getting it. Taking a world, a fantasy world, and saying, we are going to make adjustments to make that world look more like our world is antithetical to creating a fantasy world. If you create a story about a planet with all these different alien races, and you say, we're going to take this guy's amazing science fiction story and make it look more like our world, that's antithetical to making a story in a game or a movie about another world! Do you get it now? Do you understand? It's the antithesis of another world if you make it look like ours! I'm not saying they don't belong. I'm not being hateful. It's quite reasonable. It's quite logical. You want to make a story about what our world looks like? Then do it. Plenty of people have. Modern Family, amazing comedy. Brooklyn Nine-Nine, amazing comedy. Super diverse shows representing a spectrum of existence. And guess what? It's, It's rooted in our world. So it makes perfectly good sense. It makes perfectly good sense to be like, this is supposed to look like the world that we live in. It's literally about uh, a district in New York. You find the word antithetical? It's the... I almost said it's the antithesis. Can't use the word. It's the opposite intention, or it's the opposite effect. Black is antithetical uh, to white. Like, in when checkers, red's antithetical to black. But like, it's 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 an opposing uh, intention. It's not. It's. I, I can give you the if you want the textbook definition. Uh, antithetical, directly opposed or contrasted, mutually incompatible. It, it, it's it's a contrary intention. They're doing the same thing with the wheel of time. There's a race of people in the Wheel of Time, and their height 
skin color and hair color is incredibly important to the story like it's actually super duper important and they decided for the sake of diversity we're gonna cast a dark skinned person for one of these characters what the frick are you doing you're in a fantasy world and a fantasy realm where people can wield powers and there's beings that look like minotaurs and gross little things and crawling on the ground and there's fades and all this stuff and you're like we really want to make sure we just why the crazy thing about wheel of time is there's like a litany of of uh, geographical locations, customs, clothing, customs, uh, different beliefs, different ideas, different backstories, and people look differently. It, it's not it's not like a book full of white people. Like they literally have constant diversity in that book. But let's take a central theme and people group, and let's just change it. Because well, you know that'll get people to watch. Like it's ironically insulting to the people that they're trying to appeal to. Like is that how you pick out your movies when you're going to watch them? You're like, well, how many black people are in this? Like, do you go to IMDb and count them up before you watch a show? It's so dumb and superficial. It's not how you get somebody to watch a show. You watch a show because it's good. Think of all the shows you've ever watched and told your friends to watch them. Have you ever been like, this show's amazing, bud. At least four black people are in it. What the frick does that even mean? What, what, what's the story about? Is the action good? Is the writing good? Like when I tell people to watch Breaking Bad or Lost or any of the shows that I remember as being amazing, I don't think about any of those things. So if it was any other fantasy story that referenced disabled people explicitly from the get-go, you'd be okay. Yeah, because if it's in the source material, I don't care. It's about... Yeah, if, if somebody made a show like that and it was an original story, Dr. Red, I wouldn't care. You're completely misunderstanding my point. I wasn't saying... And the fact that you're insinuating I was saying this shows that you're trying to slant things negatively. The idea that I was insinuating that disabled people don't belong in fantasy realms. Like, what in the actual frick? No. If someone wrote a story and there was a guy you know, missing a leg and on crutches, or there was a guy who was missing a leg and had to have a a wooden leg, I wouldn't be like, are you freaking kidding me? This is a fantasy realm. Like, that exists in in pirate lore. That exists in all kinds of stories. People losing limbs. I mean, my gosh. I mean, the one guy in, in Game of Thrones, you know, loses his arm and has to have a fake arm or whatever. Like, if it's in there, if it's in the source material, I don't give a frick. That's not what I was saying. You're taking a story where that's not there and you're shoving it in. Why? Because they want to make a fantasy world look more like our world. How can you not see that as just being absolutely brain dead stupid? What, like, it's a, it's a fantasy realm that imagined this whole other existence. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to cheapen it by make, we want to make it look more like our world. What the frick? Why? Why do I want to watch a world, a, a movie or a show about a world that's all about this crazy awesome place and you, what I, I need to be reminded of what our world looks like oops for totally forgot man you know I was watching the rings of power and it was so crazy I went to the grocery store and I was shocked because there there were there were black people in the grocery store and I just forgot they existed because I was watching the rings of power Honestly, your original argument was about the wheelchair and not the person in it. It's just about those obvious virtue grabs. It's like, this is clearly not about writing a good story. This is about diversity dust. You're like, let's sprinkle this on top. It'll make people watch the show. Let's put it front and center in the marketing. It's, you can have amazing, great stories with good representation without doing that. There are really good examples of this. I reference a couple of comedies. Let's talk about the Black Panther movie. That movie is just a fantastic movie. It's probably one of the better origin stories in the MCU. It's got, I think it's got probably one of the strongest casts of an origin story. As you watch some of the origin stories, some of the supporting casts aren't that great. The, the, The depth of quality in the cast in Black Panther, I think is probably one of the strongest in the MCU. 
and it and they didn't do some like what well, let's let's change a character because it'll get people to watch so we're we we we've kind of gone way off rails here the point that i'm making is it's far better, it's actually far more fun, honestly, to have dialogue and back and forth about writing and choices instead of just like running to getting your rubber stamp and going woke trash, woke trash. So in the in the story, like the the latest Starfield news that the sh- the, 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 the the Starfield story is going to be philosophical and it made me think of Star Trek, the first thing I thought was People will call this game woke if they have, if they attempt to address certain philosophical questions and certain situations. Guaranteed. So that's why we're way off on this. On this, we're talking. We're talking Rings of Power. We're talking Wheel of Time. We're talking Star Trek. Diversity dust just isn't isn't just about representation and virtue signaling. It's also about offering different groups paid employment in high high profile shows. Yeah, but I don't think that's how you cast members either. I think you cast people that fit the part and look the part. If you're casting for a book and people are supposed to be tall, very very fair and light skinned with red hair, then find people that fit that. They're, they're, that's like a hybrid of merit, meritocracy like are they a good actor do they have the merits to do and convey the character right and uh, I don't know what the other one would be what would the other word be like there's there's minimum qualifications and the minimum qualifications for the Aiel in Wheel of Time is we need tall people with red hair and light skin that's what we're doing like do you think when they were casting for the Black Panther they were like I mean, guys, we we hired a lot of black actors. I think we need to kind of even this out. Let's get Martin Freeman in here. No, no. They cast Martin Freeman because that was the role. That was the description of the role. He was the right guy for the role. They didn't cast Martin Freeman because they were like, we got to check this box. That's not how you cast people in shows. That's not how you hire people for anything. It's counterproductive. See, we, the, the, we're getting we're getting into categories that we don't want to go because we're getting into categories of like the cultural stuff and everything going on. And this is like too close to Reforge Radio and the show that I'm getting ready to launch with Andrew Schwab. We're going to get into this, and he sent me an amazing breakdown of the difference between doing something because it makes you feel good and doing something because it does good. There's a difference between doing something that does good and doing something that feels good. Sure, it feels good to check these boxes. Look at what we did. Is it doing good? Does it bolster the quality of the show? Does it give you a a deep Rolodex of amazing great actors? Or did you do it because it makes you feel good? Like, there's a huge difference between doing good and feeling good. And so much of what happens today is, well, it's going to make me feel good to retweet this and do this hashtag and celebrate this thing. Is it doing good? Is it having a positive effect? What's the outcome? What if they change the entire group to short people with dark skin and still have the one outlier character? Would you be okay with that? In what? What do you what it change the entire group in Black Panther? Is the Rings of Power a remake or a remaster? JK wrong stream. <laughs> Very good. I think I can feel good and do good at the same time. Well, sure. I'm. They're not mutually juxtaposed. It's not like when you do good, you don't feel good. You know what I'm saying? It's not. It's not that when you do good, you can't feel good. But there are times where feel good supersedes, and it's not actually doing good. It's not having a positive effect. Oh, the wheel of time. Didn't you say it's part of the plot that the one character is different from his tribe or whatever? Oh, so you're saying if they change the entire group to short people with dark skin and still have that one outlier character, would you be okay with that? It still it still wouldn't be in line with what the story set out to do. Like the 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 minute you start doing that, Zubair, there are story elements that have to disappear. So I understand that there is uh what's the word? Artistic liberty. 
So as I'm rereading The Lord of the Rings, I'm noticing all these things that are left out of the movie. Like the fact that like Legolas and and their his elvish people, they had Gollum in jail for a while and they started letting him come out and climb trees and stuff. And I'm like, "Oh my gosh, that's pretty significant. That would have a pretty significant weight on Legolas and and those people and how they would feel about messing that up." And artistic liberty, they had to cut that, right? It didn't necessarily take away from the story because all you need to know is that Gollum is is playing a part and he's and he's freely roaming and following the ring. That's still well intact, right? He's trying to find the ring. Legolas's people end up with him. He's trying to find the ring. If we take this out, it's okay. That story trajectory isn't disrupted, right? You go into the Wheel of Time, and one of the single most important things at the beginning of the story is these people, this is what they look like. The author takes great pains to describe what people look like in the Wheel of Time. It is central to his writing style. It is central to the characters. And to be like, we're going to change that because we want to appeal to people that look like this I can't look at that and think that's a good decision it doesn't matter what the end result is the intention and the choice is so disruptive to the fabric of the story that was written it's not removing a story element like we don't have to like let's say in the wheel of time they leave their village and they stop in this village and then they end up in this very big village and they rip out the small village stop off that's fine it's they're still getting to the destination you still have the same story arc and trajectory so when artistic liberty removes things for the sake of like we don't have enough time or like this isn't going to necessarily disrupt the character's arc like this stopping in this village that's not the same as changing the fabric of the characters and what they look like to be like well this will appeal to people that look like this that's not that's not doing good that makes you feel good it's not doing good to the story to say yeah, it's a 14 uh, part book series and this guy's tall, he's light skinned and has red hair and you're supposed to pick up on that fact and when you run into the Aiel, the Aiel look like that and they play an enormous role in the entire trajectory of the 14 books. These people, their customs, their beliefs, their following of him and you're like, yeah, but we, we, we think if we, we, we're going to change, we're going to change some things here. What the frick? It's not it, it it's not a it's not a creative artistic liberty decision that bolsters and impacts the story. It weakens it. It weakens it and it cheapens it. That's the problem. It's like cutting Tom Bombadil. It wasn't necessary to the plot. Yeah, Tom Bombadil's interesting and very funny, but he doesn't he doesn't modify the plot. He enhances it, but he doesn't modify the plot. They still get to Rivendell. He, like Frodo still gets stabbed and poisoned. Like Bombadil just saves them from a tree and teaches them about some stuff, and then they're on their merry way. As a black man, if you try to cheaply appeal to me, it actually does the opposite. I won't engage with your content. MJ says same for me. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I've not had a conversation yet where someone's like, oh yeah, that's why I watch a show. I'm so glad they did that. I'm so glad that the Wheel of Time changed that character and made them darker skin. Like, so Starfield? Okay, this is tangential to the discussion, but I believe I'm trying to demonstrate why, ironically enough, as I sort of attack Wheel of Time and I attack Rings of Power for making what I think are poor decisions... I'm trying to demonstrate if you're going to take issues with the Starfield story being philosophical, being more like Star Trek The Next Generation, then I would prefer to engage with people that are going to thoughtfully try and dissect it and break it down rather than just call it woke. Because I don't think that's productive. That was my concern. As soon as I read what the guy said, he's like, this is not just another shooter. This is not another just another RPG. It's going to be a deep, philosophical game. I was like, say what now? Say what now? Like that, that might not jive with, with, with the gaming world. They might not get it. They might criticize it.
Ninety percent of the viewers give a about the books. They just want a good show. Would Halle Berry playing the Little Mermaid be in this category, even though she's an amazing voice and could be the best actress for the job? Devil's Advocate. I don't understand why they want to do that with with Disney princesses because Disney princesses are amazing, amazingly diverse. Right now, you want to go all the way back in time when there was only like four of them. Sure. It was a little unidimensional, but in 2022, if you sit here and try and tell me that Disney princesses are not diverse, you don't know what the frick you're talking about and you aren't paying attention. Like, no, you don't need to go back and grab Ariel and change her skin color. That doesn't make any sense. That that's not, it's totally not necessary. If you go back and you only grab like the first four Disney princesses and you're like, yeah, look how unidimensional representation is. Okay, but we don't live then. We live now. And they've done an amazing job. They've done a great job. One of my, my, my kids love Raya. They, oh, Raya? Is it Raya or Raya? They love Raya. They love Moana. Like, they, they, they've not gotten to see Mulan yet, though, I don't think. I think my daughter would love that movie. Wait, I think they have. I can't remember. It has zero effect on the story. Yeah, but I don't think you get the green light, Omar, just because it has zero effect on the story. You can't be like, well, it has no effect on the story. Let's go for it. Like, I I don't know. Are those considered Disney princesses? Yes. What do you mean? Mulan, Raya, Moana, Pocahontas, Princess and the Frog. Yeah, what are you talking about? Go, go buy a Disney princess uh, doll kit, and you'll see. This is just not necessary. The Little Mermaid was especially popular with black girls, and the music was Car- uh, Caribbean. O- okay, and isn't it? <laughs> I misjudged Lono. I took him for a progressive guy. My apologies. I have progressive thoughts in different areas. I don't really fit into a category. This is something that me and Andrew get into on our show. I'm, I'm categorically agnostic. Like, you can't put me into a category. There are areas where I break, like, my upbringing was very conservative, and I break with a lot of my upbringing. I'm not as traditional or conservative in certain areas. In certain areas, I'm, I'm a little, I'm, I'm quite a bit more progressive. I'm quite a bit more progressive than some of the men I go to church with. And are, I'm friends with them, and I would, I would, I, I'm, 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 I lean progressive in certain categories where uh, they, they don't. And then in other categories, I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to lean over to this side. To me, it's a case by case basis. I analyze the situation and try to come to a conclusion. I, I try to come to a conclusion that, like, where would I lean here? Yeah, calling me a sensible, sensible liberal. Yeah, that doesn't work either. That label doesn't work. You're only getting a slice of my beliefs to begin with. Like, no, I wouldn't fit in that categorical box either. Maybe my, like, if you try to jam my whole body into that box, sensible liberal, I think, like, my arm would fit in there. That's about it. If it's not important, why can't it change? I guess. No, the impetus is on you to say why it should change. The impetus is, if you're going to make a change, you have you have to establish the impetus for the change. What's the impetus? Why? It's, to me, I think you could argue there's a lot of good done when a certain demographic really likes a story and the main character doesn't look like them. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that great? What if the Black Panther was strangely super popular and more for for whatever reason just imagine a world where for whatever reason the black panther was super popular with the white audience you wouldn't change it you would celebrate that you'd be like that's pretty dope an audience that has less in common with the with the with the actors and the demographic within the within the movie they're loving this that's something that you would celebrate and say yeah that's actually how you build you build bridges of of uh, diverse friendships and communities by saying, man, we love the Little Mermaid. Really? Like, it almost sounds weird to be like, I'm shocked that 
black little young black girls and people in the Caribbean like the little mermaid what's so shocking about that are they that like is that your view of them that like you're shocked they could enjoy the movie like Ariel's skin color would have gotten in the way that's actually ironically a weird view maybe even like there's like an undercurrent of uh, the R word there like why would you think that why can't they enjoy the movie like they're not gonna be able to watch it or enjoy it you know this movie's great story's awesome music's great but uh I main character skin color bro I just can't get past it there's a fictional animated character whose race plays no role in the story also Little Mermaid isn't a Di- isn't Disney based property they chose to make her a redheaded white girl wait how is it not a Disney based property what are you talking about yes it is that's a Disney movie How are you calling The Little Mermaid not Disney property? It's public domain. It's supposedly in the public domain just like Pinocchio. Oh, 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 oh. Well, now hang on a minute. If you're if you're playing like a legalese thing, because of how old it is oh Disney made a Little Mermaid movie oh 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 I understand what you're saying now okay I get what you're saying okay but Disney owns Ariel and the music do they not I don't, is she always called Ariel like that would be, I guess, would be my question. Because if they're going to use all the same songs and they're going to use all of the all of the original score for the most part, then that some of that you would argue is Disney's property, is it not? Like the character in the story isn't their IP, but you like if you're going to use the music, then I would imagine that there is some sort of a rights agreement there because they wrote the music, they had the people sing it and score it. So the the story of The Little Mermaid is not Disney IP, but everything contained in that movie is. Like, Pinocchio is public domain, but the Disney rendition and all those songs, that's their property. So if you wanted to do a musical and use all those songs, you're dealing with Disney property. No Starfield, I guess. Bye. If you are tuning in for Starfield news, we're about two hours into the show, so we are well, well off the train tracks. Um, that's just the nature of things sometimes. It's licensing. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're getting off into, like, what about isms and, and, and tangential things, right? The point is, the point is, I will continue to say... If you're going to grab an existing character and you're going to say, let's change what this character looks like, and the reason that you're doing it is for the sake of diversity, I think that's superficial and largely pretty stupid. I don't think that's doing good. I think it makes people feel good. Now, if there's economic realities that you're like, well, The Little Mermaid is super popular in this demographic, so we're going to make the character look like these people, I still think that that's superficial and stupid. As if they've enjoyed it all this time, but now they're really going to enjoy it. What, What do you mean? We should be celebrating the fact that, like, we have a diverse Rolodex of Disney princesses, and this one in particular in a cool way, is super popular in a demographic that looks nothing like the main character. If the character's race doesn't matter, then I don't care if they change it. It bothers me in no way at all. I will definitely agree that there are degrees of of, of this being stupid. Like, I think there are degrees of it. Because when you look at um, when you look at the Wheel of Time as I was doing you're dealing with actual important story elements and you're changing them not because it's going to enhance the story you you want to do something that's going to get you that 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 like let's all clap right 
it isn't the same as your example where it's a central part of the story. I was saying the movie was tremendously popular because of the story and the music. Uh, it is superficial only to cast uh, redheaded white girls for that role. As I said, I think I think there is a definitive difference between changing something that's fundamental to the story, like in the Wheel of Time, and going to the Little Mermaid and being like, "Well, traditionally, this story is not rooted in in, in what the person looks like, and it actually this story existed before Disney made their movie, so we're well within our right to change what the person looks like." Sure, I still question the intention of it. I still think you're doing something that's focused on feeling good and not doing good. Instead of just being like, yeah, we're going to take all the songs, the character, the story, and we're going to do a musical, and it's going to be great. You're like, well, let's swap it all. Like, imagine looking at the age demographic of people that enjoyed Moana, and then going and doing a musical, and casting live actors and actresses, and changing Moana to a white girl. Why? Oh, well, because we did an age demographic breakdown, and more white girls enjoyed Moana, so we decided to do that. People would be freaking incensed. They never actually say where the island is. Now, obviously, it's inspired by the the people that the the accents are based off of and the appearances are based off of. And you could argue that well, that's intrinsic to the character's identity, more so than than the Little Mermaid. But it would still smack of the same problem. Like you, you can justify it with the demographic argument, but you're still doing the same thing. You're still making a superficial change. See, this is why dialogue about this is so important and you can't just go around with a rubber stamp and just call everything woke. Because I do think there are times where it's like, okay, that's not a big deal. Maybe I can be okay with that. And other times where it's like, what the frick are you doing? You see what I'm saying? Like, I do think there are times where I could be like, yeah, that's not a big deal. Like, people have given examples with um, Nick Fury. Nah, it's not a big deal. People shrug that one off. Some of it's because everybody loves Samuel L. Jackson. But certain times, people just shrug it off. Why? It doesn't seem like it's this big, massive deal. It's not drawn a lot of attention to. And it doesn't seem artificial and stupid. And then there are times where it's like, what on earth are you... Why are you doing this? This doesn't seem like this has been built in a way that is trying to have, like, integrity and accuracy to the story. I think this is actually the most intelligent take. I've met very few that wouldn't agree. I'd roll my eyes if someone changed an existing story just to try to cater to me. Write something new and great to appeal to me. Don't just half-butt something already existing. Yeah, I, I think that's the other problem is if we get beneath the decision-making of like what color someone's skin should be in a, in a story, right? If we get beneath that and we just say... Why are you just taking an existing story and repackaging it? Right? You're you're just trying to sell me something and you're like, yes, but this time we painted the walls blue. And you're like, okay. Like, if you get beneath that and you really analyze the artistic intention of just reusing something that's popular... And then you stack on top of that some of these decisions that seem incredibly superficial. I start to think maybe the criticism should go even farther than that's just diversity does. Maybe this, maybe the, maybe the criticism should go. That's not good art. That's not good art. Would you fill a museum with a bunch of repainted Van Goghs? Oh, but you see the Starry Night now uses a red color palette I think there's I think there's a deeper problem with it I think sometimes people have a really hard time like outlining their position on it but it feels like cheap reprinted art it doesn't feel like a new awesome authentic story it feels cheap So we're we're getting lost. We're getting lost on the tree branches. The root of the problem is it just isn't good art. You're just reusing something that's already in existence. This is one of the reasons that Star Wars is so inconsistent because they're reusing something that everybody's already attached to nostalgically and then you end up with a cheap, poorly written show with directors who have a bad backlog of content. 
50 percent from rotten tomatoes directors and screenplay writers now all, all the rest why because disney was like we could probably pay him less and star wars is super popular it's bad art Yeah, it's just so derivative. I already think you're behind the eight ball. You're already behind the eight ball when we're like, we're going to do a live action Little Mermaid. Why? The story is there. It's classic. It's kind of timeless. The music is good. Why? You're already behind the eight ball on quality. Because the purpose of the art's already sort of questionable. What's the point of this? Oh, and we're also going to change what the characters look like. All right. Uh, somebody did, 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 did somebody said something. Did I want to see this? I can't remember. Oh, Lono, did you see Skill Up called Last of Us Re uh, Last of Us a remake, and he recommended it? I'm not surprised at all. <laughs> Wrath of Khan will be in movie theater September 4th. Why are they doing that? Are they celebrating something? What's the point of Passion of the Christ? Just retelling a story we all know. Well, I think historical stories are different. They fall into a different category, Eugene. Equating what I just talked about to that or like Let's go with something that's not not so not so potentially controversial. Let's go with Saving Private Ryan. Okay, we all know the story of D Day. We, we or or like um, Band of Brothers. What's the point? You could just listen to the guys tell their story. Why do a dramatic rendition? That's not an equivalency to what I'm saying. Grabbing existing movies and redoing them and changing all the characters—it's bad art. It, Telling a historical story in film, that's not bad art if done well. You're not grabbing an existing movie and just redoing it. Let's just remake Casablanca while we're at it. Let's just remake Citizen Kane. And, for the sake of diversity, let's change what all the characters look like. Would that be good art? We're already starting with a bad premise. Let's remake Casablanca. Okay, Someone bag and gag that guy. We are not remaking Casablanca. Who is this person? Get them out of here. You're you're starting... You're starting down. Let's remake a movie into... Why? Why? Tell a new story. Imagine. This is so funny, too. This is so funny. Let's take this to another venue because we're talking about movies, right? Imagine if somebody did that with a book. Imagine. Somebody gets the rights to a classic book. Right? Classic book. Well, no, let's just say somebody owns the rights to the book. Whoever owns the rights to a book and they rewrite the book with minor changes to the appearances of characters. Would anybody be like, this is such a good book. I'm so glad they did this. No, you'd be like, what the frick are you doing? Whoever own, owns the rights to like Huckleberry Finn or To Kill a Mockingbird or these classics, just rewrite them. Change what some of the characters look like. You, you would be like, huh? Yeah, I rewrote Tale of Two Cities and I said it in Canada. You'd be like, this is stupid. What? Why are you doing this? But when they do it with movies, we're like, oh, but this is so cool and important. Disney's remaking their remake. Right. Like I'm saying, Eugene, let's get below the gunfire about diversity and just talk about, is it good art to remake something that's already in existence? Would you do this with books? Would you do this with paintings? Would you do this with photography? No. But with movies, we're like, well, you know... Little girls that look like this will be so happy. What the frick? What? You have plenty of great movies already out here that can do just the thing you're hoping to do. While well, on this subject, I would love to see your analysis on why Saints Row Remake failed. Most media outlets are saying it went woke. I'd have to play it to know. To me, MJ, 
I think people will overlook that kind of stuff if the game is good. I saw nothing but glitch riddled just nonsense. It looked really broken and messed up. I think people will eat around the fat if they're having fun. Like, let's say it's super hyper woke and they're constantly preaching at you in this in the in the video game. I think people will eat around that if they're having a good time. I saw glitches, bugs, broken stuff. I think there's a tremendous volume in modern interpretations on classic folklore and classic stories. I'd love a new adaptation of Moby Dick. Again, it's all about the intention, right? Taking an old movie where they don't have they didn't have the special effects like Moby Dick and being like, dude, let's do an amazing Moby Dick with great special effects. Didn't they do one recently with Chris Chris Hemsworth? And I thought it got absolutely shredded. Devil's Advocate, The Wiz is a remake of The Wizard of Oz as a Detroit urban tale in the 70s. It's completely remaining and insanely creative and artful. I would say The Wiz is not a remake. I feel like The Wiz is almost a reimagination. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be pedantic. I do think there's a difference between a remake and a reboot or a reimagination. I don't think The Wiz would be classified as a remake of The Wizard of Oz. It's a reimagined Wizard of Oz. I don't think the new Saints Row was that woke. Maybe a little bit, but the main issue is it's trying to tap into the Fortnite Gen Z energy, but it's just cringe, as the youngsters would say. Yeah, like an adaptation. Yeah, Heart of the Sea, Hemsworth and Holland. Yeah, I didn't think Heart of the Sea got rated that well. See, again, I think that's the problem. Like... When you try and take some classic story like that, and you're like, well, now we have the ability to do, you know, what is it, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? Yeah, let's do that one. Because, I mean, you can go down under the sea now and make it look amazing. Or you could just create your own new story, someone inspired by 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, like The Abyss. Great movie. A really, really good movie. Really good cast. Ed Harris, oh man, so good. Such a great movie. I don't think there's always a right or a wrong answer here, but I do sometimes think that when they try to do this like, oh, let's do 20,000 Leagues and see, let's do Moby Dick, the movies end up being really bad because they're just trying to, They're it's, it's why Obi-Wan was bad. You're grabbing a popular name and then everything else just sort of is like half-hearted. Well, we don't need to do much here. Heart of the Sea wasn't really a rewrite of Moby Dick. It was based on the events that Moby Dick was based on. Personally, I enjoyed it. Oh, I didn't realize it was just based on the events. Does Will Smith playing the main character in I Am Legend have any bearing on the story? I'm not, I don't know. I'm not familiar with the story. I'm, I mean, I watched the movie. I've already conceded, Omar, that there's varying degrees of offense. If you want to take a story and the character's the character's race has no bearing on the story, he's just a scientist in New York, and maybe in the book he's a white guy, and then when they cast the movie, they're like, yeah, we think Will Smith's a great fit for this, right? I think Will Smith's a brilliant actor, so it's clear that they didn't do it just because they're trying to do some virtue grab. They were like, no, we think Will Smith's going to be really good. The solo... The solo on-cam emotional depth that we need, we think he can do it, right? We think he has the chops. I don't have a problem with that. Like, we're talking about taking existing movies or stories and remaking them and just being like, yeah, let's, let's swap. Why? What, what's the point? See what I mean? They're making the decision beforehand. It wouldn't surprise me at all if when they had auditions for I Am Legend, they let everybody audition. Now, maybe they started with main character first, because obviously, if you cast Will Smith, what his family looks like is going to play a part, right? Because he had children. Whether or not his wife is white or black is irrelevant. You'd have to cast the children appropriately. So I don't know how they did the casting, but... 
in my mind, they probably took auditions from everybody because the depth of what the person needed to do was pretty important. He's by himself the whole time. That's challenging. Like, look at, you know, Tom Hanks as an example in Castaway. There are plenty of books where it would happen is all I'm saying. Many older stories have been published to cherish European American culture. You're assuming the swap is just for swap for brownie points. Why else would they be doing it, Eugene? They didn't have an open casting call and then say, we think this is the best person. They said, they, they quite literally say, we are recasting this role as a black person. Like, that's commonly what's said by showrunners. Like, homie, the Wheel of Time showrunners literally said, we want this world to look more like our world. That is quite literally swapping for brownie points. You're not doing it and saying, we think this deepens the storytelling. We've created we've created uh, creative character arcs and backstories to make sense of why these people are here. No, you did it because you want that world to look like our world. That's diversity dust speak. That's not, we're writing a great story. We're creating good backstory. We're creating good context for these things to exist. They literally said we're doing it because we want the, the cast to be diverse like our world is diverse. Yeah, Wheel of Time, I didn't even read why they did it. I just know that it's bad. It's extremely destructive to a major plot point. Major plot point. I'm mostly arguing for Little Mermaid at this point. I don't know. Here's the problem with this Omar. One of the things I've tried to put on display today, which I know is extremely sidebar issue, but it's a good example of how to handle Starfield and the Starfield story, okay? I'm trying to put on display that every instance is different, and you should analyze it and break it down and not just go, it's woke trash. I think the assumption in almost all instances is they swap just to swap. Because a lot of the times, most recently, they have Eugene. You think remaking the Ghostbusters and making everybody a woman was just... They, you think they just fell backwards into that? Oops, a daisy. <laughs> They're all girls now. No. No. It's intentional. Like, to, to pretend that there's not a trend of it happening in a very superficial way, I, I think is disingenuous. It's very common. It's, it's a common trope. It's such a trope and a stereotype now. To just to just gender a race swap. It's a common thing now. I'm not saying that that's the way that it is every time. I'm saying it makes sense why somebody would question it and think it's superficial and empty. Because it's happening in such artificial, manufactured, forced ways. Thank you, Camille. What Camille say? The description for the God of War Ragnarok stream is messed up. What's wrong with it? Got it straightened out? What was wrong? Did I copy and paste the wrong thing? Thanks for drawing our attention to that. I, 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 I was just grabbing it. It's fixed. It was the template. There was a version of I Am Legend that had Arnold as a lead. Oh, there wasn't a description. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was just the template. I never position on most of these things, bro. Honest debate. I'm not going to leap to conclusions about you or your positions from it. That's why I zeroed in on that one. Yeah, I think if pressed, Omar, I will take less of an issue with certain instances where it happens. I'd be like, you know, I feel like this is sort of forced. This feels sort of like a virtue grab. At the very least, I would love to have a debate about how cool it is to have a musical that a certain demographic loves and the character doesn't look like them. I think that's cool in and of itself. Like, little white girls loving Moana, I think is a cool thing. I think you're fostering a culture where it's not something we draw tons of attention to. It's just you're friends with and you're in community with all sorts of different types of people. 
because you don't care about those things. I think it's a more subversive way and a more understated way of demolishing a lot of this stuff. It's not heavy-handed. It's it's more of a it's more of an organic interweaving of of persons. And I think when you do this, you undo some of that because you're suddenly drawing attention to the fact that well the little mermaid is really popular in this demographic so we really think we want to change what the character looks like why the frick are you drawing attention to this little girls everywhere aren't thinking about that they're watching these movies and they love the story it relates to them they think it's cool they think the music is entertaining and now you're drawing their attention to something that the original story didn't draw their attention to that's an under that's an undercurrent foundational problem with this it's not about the decision it's not about the is it right or is it wrong it's why are you doing that because now it's a point in the story now I've got to talk to my little girl about like she sees she sees Ariel in the cartoon version and then she's going to watch this new thing and that's going to be a question Why does she look different? And obviously you would say, well, as the parent, you just say it doesn't really matter. (laughs) But now all of a sudden, that's a point in in their mind. Well, they they made, they, they remade it and they changed what everybody looks like. Why? Now all of a sudden, that's part of the narrative. Now all of a sudden, that's part of the schema with which they look at content. And instead of it being it's just a great story whether it's Mulan or Raya or Moana or Princess and the Frog you don't think that the same thing would happen if you reverse the decision imagine making Princess and the Frog and swapping out for for a white girl my daughter would ask the same question why does she look different now you're suddenly creating something in the child's analysis in, in the child's analysis of the story and the in the content, now all of a sudden there's something new for them to think about. It doesn't matter, and some stories transcend the color of the skin. It doesn't matter. Yeah, imagine making Princess and the Frog, and it's not a frog; it's a hamster now. I just think it's, I just think it's, I don't know. I think it's bad. I think it's bad art. I'm definitely remaking Princess and the Frog and casting a gecko. Race is not a concern in the mid nineties. We made progress and moved on. Now it's on everyone's mind constantly. Everyone can relate to that. That's what I mean, Fuzzy. Like, I just know, and this is obviously anecdotal, but for me personally, with my kids, the thing that's been the most impactful has just been my kids sort of seeing things, being exposed to things in a practical way and not drawing tons of attention to it. Being being in and around... Um, Ethiopian children or Korean children I don't draw their attention to that it's just something that they're exposed to now if suddenly one of their friends showed up one day let's imagine that they could there was a there was a there was new technology and they could push a button and they could suddenly look white well that'd be very confusing to my kids they'd be like why does I'm making up a name why does Gregory suddenly look so different? Right? Y- you're acting like they wouldn't notice. Well, they're kids. They wouldn't notice. Oh, shut the frick up. You've never been around children if you think that. They would immediately notice. Why is Gregory suddenly black? Why is Gregory suddenly white or whatever? So, yes, when they watch a story with a familiar character and suddenly the character looks different, they will notice. And suddenly now there's this thing in their mind about, well, it's really important or, oh, it's not important, so it doesn't really matter. W- w- what do you mean? Children think simplistically. That The person doesn't look 
right. Wait. Like, think about it this way. What if you suddenly recreated Moana and you made her, like, hyper skinny and really muscular? People would be like, that doesn't look like Moana. Why does Moana look different? It would be confusing to the child. And then you're going to get in, what, some body type argument with them or, or, or talk to them? Let's, let's remake Snow White and make her obese. The, and, and act like kids wouldn't notice and question it. And suddenly now they're focused on body types. Why, why, why is Snow White... A kid would say this. A kid would be like, why is Snow White fat? I'm not saying you can't make stories with people that are bigger and have bigger body types. That's totally fine. When you take an existing story and you repackage it and you change what the person's look looks like pretending that a child won't notice and then suddenly that's in their mind as like this is an important thing the teaching point is what's inside that matters the character represents feelings or whatever's in all of us yeah I, I, I'm not saying there couldn't be a good teachable moment but they're suddenly at a young age thinking that that a person's skin color or body type is important. Why? Well, because it was important enough to change. Arguing that it's not important while simultaneously making it a point of importance is contradictory and confusing. It's not important. Well, then why did they change? Well, it it was important enough for us to change, but it's not important at all. Wait, what? It's super important that we do this to convey that it's not important. That's going to be lo- that nuance is going to be lost on a 10-year-old. That that nuance is going to be lost. It was important enough to completely change what everyone looked like in the story, but we're doing that to stress to you that what they look like's not important. We made it important. It became a very important thing to us. It was a priority that we change what these people look like because we wanted to convey to you that what people look like is not important. You just contradicted yourself. What? I was confused for a while uh, as a kid when they changed Aunt Viv and Fresh Prince. Yeah, that was confusing because it was, you know, all of a sudden the actor is just different. It is not lost at all. I had to learn about race in like the first grade. Well, we're going to get into a weird category that I don't want to go in about like appropriate ages for certain discussions and like when they have categories for certain things. And a lot of that should be based on psychology and childhood mental development. And I think a lot of the times people are jumping the gun and they're they're dumping their own cultural struggles, frustrations, and issues on the next generation because it's so important to them that, yeah, we should be talking about these things with, like, first and second graders. Like, that's a whole other discussion that I don't want to have. But I do think if that's going to be taking place, those sort of things should be handled by the experts. And studies about childhood development, categories, capacity for understanding certain things, yeah, that that's something we can't discuss here. It'd be great if we could talk about gaming on a gaming channel. Well, hopefully the second hour of the show, because the first hour of the show, we debated Starfield, we debated the story, we debated Star Trek. Hopefully the second hour of the show put on full display why I don't think you're achieving anything if you just call something woke. So if Starfield comes out and the Starfield story is philosophical and it's a lot like Star Trek The Next Generation and you're, you're faced with with philosophical conundrums. If you don't like it, okay, attempt to criticize it analytically and intelligently. Don't just call it woke trash. Hopefully, this has been a cool experiment, like, good debate for the first hour. We actually talked about the game quite a bit. We talked about game size quite a bit. If you weren't here for the Starfield game size, they're actually saying it's going to be twice as big as any game they've ever made. What does that mean for futility, redundancy, dullness? You're just doing the same thing over and over again, and everything feels the same. And then we did. I think we spent about an hour saying, let's talk about movies and TV shows and and these things that are happening with Wheel of Time and and Rings of Power and Little Mermaid. I think it's connected because I think a lot of the times, I think as we've shown, every instance is different. 
So if you're going to approach Starfield and you're going to say, I don't like what they did. It feels like they shoved a bunch of stuff into the game that shouldn't be there. You're probably going to achieve a whole lot more by thoughtfully breaking it down than just labeling. You've changed my view on what's woke and what's not. Well, new information and new viewpoints if they actually adjust your position on something is very healthy. I've done that myself many times. I've changed my thoughts on things. And I'll be honest, we 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 didn't get into the deep waters. We kind of we kind of got in a little boat and we kind of drifted around really deep cultural commentary waters, right? We did a great job. You guys kept it cool and respectful. It didn't get out of hand. Nobody said anything hateful. Funny enough, we just had a pretty serious conversation for about an hour, and after trimming the fat with the with some of the fanboyism that we were dealing with for a while, suddenly we're, we're, it's not quite as toxic in here. That was a very good discussion. I actually applaud chat for, for keeping us... We stayed in the rowboat. We didn't fall out of the uh, out of the boat and in, into deep waters and, and, and get real nasty. It, it actually stayed very, very, uh, I think, very healthy. Just remember, nothing is woke. It's good, it's good writing or bad. That's it. Yeah, I do think sometimes you could say that there is there is a there is a an air of wokeness about something because it, it, it it's trying to say or do a certain thing but I think you're going to communicate way better what you mean by analyzing the writing. It was really preachy. Well, in what way? Well, they really got on this soapbox and it it did happen to be this leaning or this political or progressive idea, which that's not the problem. The problem isn't that those ideas exist. They exist and people think that way. That's fine. It's how are you executing on putting that idea out there? I have no problem reading a book, watching a movie, or playing a video game that has ideas in it that I don't agree with. I'm not so easily threatened, and neither should you. Put some skill points in having some sense of, like, don't be so insecure so that you can play a game or watch a movie that's got ideas in it that are contrary to your own. It's about the delivery of those ideas. If I play a video game and there's some hyper crazy political person in the game, that doesn't immediately bother me. It's the execution and the writing of it. If it breaks the fourth wall, if it's if it's immersion damaging and it feels just sloppy and poorly written, I'm going to take issues with that. I'm not going to be like, "How dare they put this in the video game?" Do you see the difference? It's not the presence of it. There are plenty of people who have and feel a certain kind of way about certain types of people, but then they'll watch shows like Modern Family, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and they'll be like, this is hilarious, this is funny, this is well-written. Why? Because they did an excellent job entertaining you, they didn't try to lecture you. The presence of those ideas didn't turn you off from the show. The presence of those people didn't turn you off from the show. No. No. The writing, the acting, the entertainment factor, that's what won you over. And that's going to be true in a video game as well. If the content loop delivers, you'll look past the the philosophical stuff in the game that maybe you don't agree with. Maybe you feel it's a little too heavy-handed after you play Starfield. Maybe you play through the Starfield story and you're like, that was heavy-handed, that got way too philosophical for me, but the gameplay was fun, I don't really care. So our next show we're going to be going over to in just a brief moment. So try to help this show out. This show is not over yet. Could we get 10 more likes on the video? Feel free to hit subscribe. If you've enjoyed today's conversation, it does get a, uh, a little... Uh, a little thick sometimes. 20 minutes ago, Raw Bacon Taco ordered a bag of the Dark Roast. Thank you so much. Two coffee orders for the day. Let's get some more coffee orders. Hey, the the viewership has gone down quite a bit. So right now, we have more loyalists in chat than usual. Let's give some members. Let's reward the people who are sticking around and hanging out. Subscribing is totally free, but you could, you could consider doing a membership uh, to become part of the community in a deeper way. And you could uh, enjoy uh, our members-only content that we do every day. You could also get into our members-only Discord. And 
uh, get a badge and emotes and everything else. If you guys want to give some members again, now is one of the perfect times to do that because there are so many people here who have kind of hung with us. You may have noticed that I kept it safe for work. Everybody was pretty respectful. If this kind of a talk show or podcast style content is enjoyable for you, don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell button. That way you don't miss my content. You might not be logged in. You need to do that if you want to press like or subscribe. Uh, Those are all the free ways to support what we do here. Just a couple more likes uh, on the video. Just a couple more likes on the video. And we will be, there's new details about God of War uh, Ragnarok. We're going to be covering that that game quite a bit in the coming weeks. Uh, Game Informer will uh, very soon have their cover story that we will be... Uh, breaking down all the information from that however however we will also be making sure to cover anytime any new info uh, comes out and one of the reasons we want to do that is we really are looking forward to this game and we really do hope that you guys support uh, the gameplay when we play it and you know there we go Mitchell says I'm gonna give some members let's see these grabbed If you have been unable to grab the gifted memberships, you might have to click on the join button and then click the three dots at the top and go to your gift settings and turn it off and then back out and then go back in and turn it back on again. You may have to do that. So you click on join, then the three dots, then your gift options, turn it off and save it and then go all the way back in and turn it back on again. That's helping some people grab memberships. For whatever reason, gifted memberships, there's a bit of a lull now. They used to get grabbed almost immediately, and now it takes about a minute before they get grabbed. They do go uh, to everyone that is loyal to the channel. So if you're here all of the time, you're more likely to get a gifted membership. Uh, Some people are literally getting... Some people are literally getting a email they're getting an email because they're here so often that when gifted members go out they take priority there they go they're starting to get grabbed now mika manolo deepak mark and tacos you guys all got gifted memberships so you now have all the perks and benefits as a member you can join us for our extra talk show every day uh we do an extra show at the end of every day you can get into our members only discord and enjoy hanging out with the community off stream hours when I'm not live if you want people to play with and you'll never miss out on members only content if you are in the discord because we ping you there a six month milestone from nobody yo what's good Sven Uh, still can't announce my upgrade. GG's YouTube. I think when you when you you have to do it in a normal in a normal stream. You know what I mean? I think you have to do it in a normal stream. I think you did it in a members only stream, Eugene, and it just didn't let you do it. Let me make sure this is set. Yeah, that's primed and ready to go. Okay. Marwind deals with this by having uh the beast races being. Uh, like this. Oblivion has the Shivering Isles DLC where you can choose political parties. Fallout 4, you decide if you want to trust the Institute where the ends justify the means mentality uh, or do you want to join the other side. These, I think, are the best examples of how I can think that BGS tackles t- uh, this kind of uh, tough stuff. So I, I could see Starfield making stuff like this even more impact on the planets. Uh, yeah, I think so. The Cool Spoon. I think those are really good examples as well. You'd think it would hold over. Yeah, you would think it would hold over, Eugene. I agree. I agree. I agree. Can you explain where you go to disable and enable gifted subs again? Dr. Red, you click on the join button. You, I'll show you on screen how to do it. Give me one second. I got to change accounts to show you how to do this. All right. Okay. I need to change accounts so that I'm on an account that is uh, that is not a member. Okay. I'm going to pull my stream up and I'm going to show you how to do it. So it's a lot easier to do this when you're on a browser. Okay. So here is chat and there's a dollar sign down here and here is the join button. All right. 
the join button and the dollar sign will both get you there so if you click the dollar sign and you click membership it opens up this menu if you click join it opens up this menu do me a favor and click join see if you're getting a promotion my personal account has a 20 percent promotion it's 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 something that's a limited time offer and it's personalized and time limited so check and see if you can become a member and get like a dollar off now these three dots up here at the top are where you go there and you go to gift settings and then you just turn this on if it's already on turn it off back all the way out go back in and turn it back on again okay that's uh that's how you do it a lot of people are not able to claim gifteds because of that one setting needs to be reset okay we're going to switch gears to the god of war stream stick around really really exciting combat details you're not going to want to miss it folks calling this game just a dlc are about to get their bottom spanked so stick around for that public dress down can't wait for that make sure uh and do all the things if you haven't done it uh make sure that you do all those things Guys, let's not call names. Ben Chapa, need you to settle down just a little bit. Uh, no, no need to be calling names. You can have disagreements, but let's uh, just just chill. A teensy bit. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. This is a very quick break. I'm, I don't run ads. I know that I probably should when I step away, but we don't like to run ads because it it, it it causes buffering and we lose viewers. So that's why we do the memberships and the super chats. Okay, I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.
All right, I'm back, chat. Let's do this. I'm excited about this one. Oh, I'm excited about this one. This is one of the reasons that I was... Uh, This is one of the reasons I was a little late today. A little late today. Okay. Mm, okay. Do, 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 do. Guys, keep in mind if the mods ask you to do something, it's always usually in the spirit of something that I want. So if I don't want to engage in a certain subject or topic, uh, discussing that in the chat anyway is uh, is really unhelpful. So I'm not mad at anybody. I'm not scolding anybody. Just kind of keep that in mind. If I say, I don't really want to talk about this, uh, do me a favor and uh, don't just continue anyway in the chat, uh, especially if you're having like crosstalk with somebody. That can be pretty distracting. And also that can be very like non-indicative of what we do here. Uh, when you're going down a rabbit trail or a topic that I don't want to. Uh, let's see. Uh, arrow. I know it's hard because we all are passionate about certain subjects. So certain things come up and it's like almost impossible to not uh, do it. So I know. I know it's tough. School me, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's tough because some some topics are just too good to not like try to sink your teeth into. Trust me, I know, I know. Like, I'm very familiar. That's why I have a, a show forthcoming that you'll be able to engage with on Patreon about this. And it'll it'll have nothing to do with the Reforge brand. Okay, tweets are out, and then let me hit the Discord. All right, I'm going to put a link in chat just in case redirect doesn't work. You can always click that link instead. Okay. The latest God of War Ragnarok gameplay details show a lot of promise. Many concern that God of War gameplay would be very similar to the previous title, but Game Informer's got some great details about the God of War Ragnarok combat as well as things you'll be able to do. Just a glimpse into what's forthcoming from their cover story. If you like these videos, be sure to hit subscribe, the bell button, the like button. They are live streams, but I try to put all the information right here at the beginning. I'll be ending our previous stream. Uh, we debated the Starfield story details being philosophical and and the size of the game. So I'm going to end that stream and bring those people over. If you want to see that VOD, that is available. Uh, we do 